other fantastic national championships here at Carapiro. And their first race, uh, which is going to start way down at the 500 metre mark, is the Open Men's K4. You can see the four competitors there all ready to go. And as soon as we get the start, we'll be into it. So a pretty good program again, John. Nice to have you back. always the way you go in as the favourites, the marked team, and the rest just want to ruin your day. The beautiful conditions. Two North, North Shore clubs, uh, North Shore with Clifton, Esterhausen, Prato and Lees in lane three, and Risa, Gilbertson, Nataki and Bull in lane four. In Poverty Bay with uh, Thompson, McKendry, Firkins, Brothers, and as uh, John's mentioned, the Canoe Racing New Zealand team in lane six of Brown, Lagarth, Imri and Clancy. Absolutely winding into it now. This looks fantastic. What a great start to the event. Three days of super action for you here on Carapiro. And the icy, glassy water being cracked open by these blades pelting through in perfect unison. And now we see Brown, Lagarth, Imri and Clancy out in lane six. The canoe racing New Zealand crew doing it pretty good. North Shore, Ricer, Gilbertson, Nataki and Bull. see lots of them throughout the competition, the three days of competition here. So I hope you're all pleasantly parked away up on the bank there and uh, you'll have some instructions thrown at you throughout the day. Just remember to drag those craft up the bank a wee bit. Uh, when you've finished, make sure you hand in your numbers as you finish, as you come back and uh, that's all ready for the team down there, hard-working team getting ready for the next race throughout the day. So race one underway and finished. That's the men's K4500. That's not a bad event to start with. And we now move into the 14 and under, the women's K2500. That's a straight final. And we've got in uh, lane one, Poverty Bay. And lane two, well, we'll get through to... Hawks Bay and there's three Hawks, four Hawks Bay crews in lanes three, five, six and seven. North Shore in lanes eight and nine. Poverty Bay in lane four and also on the inside in lane one and east side paddlers in lane two. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah.
Yep, so nine starters in this 14 and under women's K2 500. All looking set and waiting for the start call. Yep. They're certainly looking the stronger of strongest of the lot out there, but over in the third lane from the outside, another of the Hawks Bay crews, Marker and Mielo. So you can see the two white boats in front. And now a much better effort from Poverty Bay, Willoughby and Arta. So we've got Hawks Bay. Uh, yep. We've got one of the entrants. We can't see them, but we can see the upside down boat now that we see that they're all okay and now we've come back to the finish here with a very good effort coming in from Hambleton and Ohio Hall in lane three and Parker and Mielo over in lane six finishing strongly too as Poverty Bay's Willoughby and Atta. Now this is 14 and under so you really see the potential here John. Yeah, so that's Mielo and Parker of Hawke's Bay over in lane 7. They're going to come through and take the 14 and under women's K2 500. And in lane 3, it's Hamilton and Hohaya Hall, also of Hawke's Bay. And as we saw right from the start, Willoughby and Utta of Poverty Bay kept their form very, very well and cruised through for third place. Yes. Has Jones and Lambie, and inside of them, that's uh, Willoughby and Keeper from Poverty Bay. No, no. Good news that it is moving as I broke through from Hamilton this morning. Wow. Brilliant sunshine and just as I was getting here, it was all lifting up again. So that will lift. It's just this uh, rubbing of the wind's going away. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, it's a bit of a test for some drivers out there on the road, isn't it? You know, um. <laughs> Can't see if you haven't got your lights on. It's good news that we're being live streamed here too for the next three days. So well done to the team, Quinn and the team down there who are organising all this with a, a couple of cameras flying overboard. And we've got one camera just alongside us here in the control tower with uh, catch capturing some of the activity down below on the grass. And uh, good that Canoe Racing New Zealand have got a few sponsors involved in this too. So just allowing those people who are really keen, would like to be here but can't, and uh, they're able to capture all the action 
on the live streaming service. I think we're just looking at the, one of the, the the holding sort of picture of the coverage at the moment, and it shows Carapero in all its glory, but you certainly cannot see the start line for the thousand for the next race. <laughs> so in this we've got uh, Rebecca Scott, Isla Westlake, Brianna Truern, Leah McCallum, uh, Natasha McGibbon and Emma Kemp. So lots of these athletes we see year after year come back to the Nationals, give it their all, keen to capture the titles. Yes. It's good too for uh, some of the under 14s here for the first time, which means that um, maybe parents or guardians are here for the first time, and uh, your support is so important. And it might be a bit of an eye opener for you, but you'll see that your Youngsters are in good hands, they're in a great sport, and they're really enjoying it. So the race is underway now, this is the Open and 23 under women's uh, K1 1000. Rebecca Scott, Bay of Plenty is in lane one, can't see at the moment, way down at the 1000 metre start. Isla Westlake from North Shore is in three, Brianna Truern of Mana, Leah McCallum, then Natasha McGibbon, and your outside competitor is Emma Kemp back again from Mana Kayak Racing Club. Yes, I'd certainly give it to uh, North Shore Isla Westlake in the blue boat. It's just very saying that it's, they've got the technology we put a drone up in the air. Um, coming through, I would Natasha McGiven over there on the far side and Emma Kemp over in the far side, folks. Um, they've got, those three have got a clean break. It's um, Probably John Munner, Emma Kemp, just at the moment coming up, I would presume, by the colour of these boys to the 500. <laughs> um, just looking at our control tower, we can't see a thing. But um, we've got great technology here with the drone in the sky. So, yes, certainly side by side at the moment, Natasha and Emma. Just like they're out there for a good, hard training exercise. And over here, closest to us, lane two doing it hard all by herself, Natasha McGibbon. Um, she's just had a great kick actually, just coming through. She just seems to have pulled up. Now, it may be the angle of the drone, but she has had a brilliant kick. Yes, coming through to the 500 now. It just certainly looks like over the far side, Emma just got it by her nose. <laughs> well spotted, mate. So on the inside of Emma Kemp is Sila Westlake, North Shore. The others can't quite see them at the moment, but certainly those uh, two boats out into the far, into the centre of the course are the ones who are in front, and it looks as they come into your view now, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be able to see it. There's certainly uh, Emma Kemp out there from Mana. Natasha McGibbon, who's on the inside? That's uh, maybe, uh, is that Isla Westlake in the blue Gee, in lane three. Uh, we'll, we'll soon pick them up. Looks like that's the case. Yes, yeah, so I'll certainly give it to Emma. She's had a great kick. Um, she's not letting her go, though. No. She's not letting her go. So we come down uh, well inside the 250. As soon as we hit these yellow boys, it's 100 to go. We'll see some fireworks between these ladies. 
Yeah. Coming up to that 100, and Kemp really digging it in now, but Natasha staying with her. Yeah. Big, powerful finish from Kemp and McGibbon. Kemp still holding it. Gibbon attacks again. Kemp holds her out. And a really good battle. This is the end of 1000, the open and under 23 women's K1 1000. And there's only just on or just under a boat length difference between Emma Kemp, who wins it from Natasha McGibbon. And in lane three, that's Isla Westlake of North Shore crossing for third. And in lane five, that's uh, Ottawa's Leah McCallum. And on the inside of her is uh, Brianna Truern. Coming up and completing the race is Rebecca Scott of Bay of Plenty. So an impressive finish, ladies and gentlemen. What a great finish there. After 1,000, it was Kemp holding off McGibbon to take the title. So we go through the same again. This is for the 18 and under men's K1-1000. Uh, from Waitara, it's uh, Noah Andrews. Poverty Bay have Maya Campbell and James Hamblin in lanes two and three. Arawa, Dylan Monk is in four. Then from North Shore, we've got Jake Borta in five. Matt McKendry from Poverty Bay is in six. Dane Worcester, Bay of Plenty in seven. And then from North Shore, Bryden Story and Riley Scott. Full lineup of nine for the 18 and under men's K1 1000. So that's your next race, and it'll be up very shortly. Heard something, that's about all. Can't see anything. This is heat one of two. The 18 and under men's K1 1000. Might have been a foghorn. So the 18 and under K1 1000 heats one and two, and then we move into the Masters, first of our Masters events. She's a pea super out there, everyone, and we think the race has started, but we can't even see it. I don't think the drone's even up there at the moment. It's uh, to be flying blind as well. Any action there, anyone?
Oh, I can see something. Can I? No idea. So this is the 18 and under men's K1 1000. Noah Andrews started in lane one. I think I can just pick him out. So if he's there, I can see the rest. Maya Campbell. Is that James Hamblin? In three, perhaps up there alongside of him in five. Is that Jack Borter out in front? Coming up to the 100 now. Uh, it's very close. White boat is Hamblin. Or is it Campbell? Oh, we'll watch as they go across the finish line. From Arawa, Dylan Monk. Maya Campbell there in the white. Well, from 1,000 out, we couldn't see them until they got to about 150. And that looks like Dylan Monk, Maya Campbell, and then very close. Out in the centre there, that was uh, McKendry and Wooster. This makes it exciting, everyone, doesn't it? When you can't see much. It's also not easy when the numbers come off. So we'll get those, uh, as the results come in, we'll just give them to you, confirmed placings. That's the first heat of two. Now the second heat is uh, Max Calvert from Mana, Kaya Gilbertson, North Shore, uh, Max Kennedy and Ollie Egan from Poverty Bay, Liam Rogers, Arawa, Charlie Mayston, Bay of Plenty, uh, Julian De Silva, Hawks Bay and uh, Tiago Chamberlain of Arawa. Those are the competitors in Heat 2 of the 18 and under men's K1 1000. Just one or two sound issues up in our area, so we're silent for a moment. And um, I know you want to hear what Max got to say. And he's been talking brilliantly, and I've heard everything he said, but no one else has. So we're getting that sorted for you.
that is thick out there, isn't it? So we might be able to see them as they hit the 100 from our viewpoint. So today, a, a, a big program, as you'd imagine, uh, the last event starting at around 4.30. That's the Junior Mixed Relay. I think they um, should issue all the paddlers with miners' headlamps so we can <laughs> we can see them as they crack through the course here and through this fog. Of course, it's a big year for kayaking in New Zealand with uh, the Olympic Games coming up and prospects, although the team hasn't been named yet or verified by the New Zealand Olympic Committee. Um, some high quality performances recently in Australia means that we could be looking at our largest uh, representative team yet, even bigger than Tokyo, as we see now. Well, if we gauge that the first canoeist we see is in lane one, then that could be Max Calvert. Can't see anyone on the inside of him even further back, so let's look at Calvert and Gilbertson. So Calvert in lane one from Mana, Gilbertson of North Shore in two. Out on the far side, that uh, may well be Tiago Chamberlain from Ottawa. But here they go, they Heading to 100 now. Yeah, Gilbertson of lane two and in lane three right alongside him. So they've stuck together, Kaya Gilbertson. So uh, Gilbertson and Kennedy. Gilbertson and Kennedy coming to the line. Gilbertson making this quite comfortable now. After the 1,000, he's uh, just on one boat length clear. So it's lanes two, three. And out on the far side, that'll be lane eight. And that certainly is uh, Tiago Chamberlain. And in fourth place will be Liam Rogers of Arawa. Well, that's quite exciting. We don't know who's leading, if anyone's tipped, <laughs> if they've all started or anything like that until they get to within about 100 metres of the finish line. So that's our fifth event of the day, the second heat of the men's under 18 K1 1000. John, good morning, everybody. Ah, uh, yes. Wouldn't be a nationals without our um, PA problems. So some great racing there. I love racing. Um, I dare say with the two heats coming through, it would have been the first four qualifying and the fifth fastest being full heats. Yes, I've had the thumbs up. So um, as they say, no medals in the heat. So just qualifying down. All these athletes have got big programs. So. Uh, just as we thought the fog was starting to uh, pick up. No, it comes in even thicker. So here we are going down to event six. Oh, here we go. The Masters. Got to love the Masters. So, um, yeah, just as I put my glasses on, seeing the, <laughs> seeing the same old people. Nobody in lane one or two. We don't see that. Now, these Riley old Foxes Masters, even though it's a 1,000 metres, they'll probably, hey, guys, let's just go to the 500. Nobody can see us. <laughs> So, no, 
they'll, they'll be down there at the thousand somewhere. So uh, nobody in lane one or two, no athletes there. First athlete we have is from White Trap, that's David. Ryan McBrethy from Hawke's Bay in lane four. There he is, Garth Spencer, lane five. Have a look at him, might even be centre seated. Um, Andy Logue from North Shore, club mate in lane six. And Mike Walker, one of our big athletes from about 10 years ago. So I think, looking at this, John, uh, lanes uh, five, six, seven. So over the far side, very fair in these conditions. I can see a light. <laughs> I can see. <laughs> yeah, there's somebody with a, is that on the starting point too? There's always something new that you can have, and that's the first time ever than paddling at night, of course, that I've seen a fog light on the course. Good to see. All right, just as they're coming into the fog as it's lifting, dropping, lifting, dropping. So um, we'll get the drone up in the sky too. Don't forget, folks, you can, uh, this is all being live streamed. So uh, we can watch it live. So no, this is our masters, nobody in lanes one or two. And as predicted, John, look out there, lanes five, six, and seven. Nobody will kick yet. <laughs> <laughs> these masters. So we've got Garth in lane five, Andy in lane six, and Mike over there in lane seven. Um, and from this vantage point, uh, we could throw a blanket over them. I can't, can't see the angle, sorry, folks. But I probably just now, I might just give that to lane seven, our Bay of Plenty paddle, paddler, Mike Walker. And I think... Uh, over there also is Garth Spence. So sandwiched in between the two of them, Andy Logue. So um, if, if Mike has got his nose in front, I know Garth won't take too kindly to that. He's coming down here now. 250 to go, just as they're coming. Nice, beautiful conditions. Thank you to all those boats that have uh, athletes who have stopped paddling. That's a good courtesy. Oh, <laughs> normally uh, we'd probably see a big kick coming through here, folks. But uh, we'll give it to these masters uh, guys coming down here with a hundred to go. I can't separate uh, the two athletes, Garth and Mike. Maybe just, just over the far side. It might be Mike Walker from Bay of Plenty.
was um, at the beach this summer and saw Mike out paddling on the surf ski. And of course, we all know how great Garth is on the surf. There we go. That's Garth. You can see the finish line. Perhaps that was the problem. We couldn't see the finish line in the fog, but there's a big kick coming from Garth. And as they're cutting, I still can't pick any difference here. Another kick from Garth. Maybe a metre, two metres into it. Yes, definitely lane five. Garth Spencer, well done. Mike walk over the far side, lane two. And the other North Shore paddler coming through. That is Andy Logue. Well done, you three guys. If you're not warmed up now, you never will be. <laughs> God, poor old God, collapsed over his boat. Oh, great inspiration. Coming down here now. Oh, a bit foggy. Lane four. That is uh, Ryan McBreathy from uh, Hawke's Bay. And also closest to us, David Sleep from the White Twitter Club. Well done, guys. Good effort. So that was our heat. Heat. They were racing like that in the heats. Jeebus. Masters men, heat one. <laughs> Those guys. <laughs> that, was, that was pride. That was pride. I've got you across the line here. So well done. So we've got another heat of the 45 to 54s coming up. Um, no, nobody, no athletes in lanes one or two. We've got Paul Randall. See, we should have guessed, John, because here's a, uh, so many athletes that we hadn't been naming in their first one. So Paul Randall, good to see you again, Paul, as he's probably down at the start line from the White Chitter Club. Matt Flannery from Coupe Canoe Club, good to see Matt out there. And of course, Vaughan Reed, North Shore, Neil Gard, Ottawa, and Yawn from Mana, so, whoa, two heats, heats in the Masters, <laughs> if I was a Masters man, I'd go, who put this program together, that should be a straight fight all, oh well, give, them another, give the old boys another race, just starting to pick up, starting to lift, it's just, and it's um, such great conditions, sort of thing you want to get out there and do one of your big training sessions on a day like today because it's not cold it's cool yes but it's not cold so we can get out there and of course the good thing about um kayaks you can put your spray deck on keep your keep your legs warm take it off if you get a bit too hot so we just heard the buzzer go the hooter so this must be our second uh heat event seven Masters men coming down the course. So I guess we can see them coming through just before the 500. We can't see them yet. It's just great. No matter how many years you're in this sport, there's always something new to, to see. Seen the little fog light. Here they come, out of the mist, out of the fog. Yeah, out of the, yeah. So I, I, I guess they, all, they will certainly be these wily old foxes looking across at one another. Um, it's still early to, to see. It looks like a straight line. Nobody really coming. <laughs> they just look like six black dots, don't they? Coming out of the mist. Something out of a Stephen King novel. Now I'm going to, way over there in um, lane seven, I think we've got the Mana athlete, and that's uh, Yawn from Mana. He just seems to be out there. Ah, he look a bit of start to brighten up now. Yeah, it's uh, Jorn Schürzer from uh, Mana, just sitting out there, not too sure, they're probably, again with the two heats folks, it, it'll be your first four through and your fifth fastest, so 
even though we can see five athletes in, in there, um, it's going to be a big race here because will it be this fifth athlete who gets fifth make it through or will it be the fifth from the previous heat? So, of course, he's coming racing through. That's going to put the pressure on fourth, which will in turn put the pressure on third, so on and so forth. And as we can see, it's very, very close. But still, we'll give it to uh, Yawn over there in lane seven. And I've got, uh, we've got uh, Matt on, uh, John on the uh, binoculars here. Just <laughs> showing me that it may be Matt from Makupe in uh, coming through in second spot, lane four. Certainly out there, Jorn Stuartzer from Mana. We give it to Matt Flannery from Coupe, lane four. He's in second spot. And just maybe also down here on the closest to us, Waitara, Paul Randall. Good old tucky boy, one of my hometown lads. So um, they've got it all sewn up. They probably thought at about the 800 John that's me I've qualified I can see me sitting here all the way for the remaining 800 meters but yes it's um, probably going to be your first four <coughs> that'll give us our eight athletes for the final and um, somebody from this heat or maybe the first will be the f um, fastest qualifying in, in the conditions like this whoa it's very very fair So good, uh, good warm-up race here. So coming down with a finish, probably with about 30 metres to go, we'll give that to Yawn from Mana. He'll be qualifying for his final. You're probably saying, why have I qualified? I didn't want to qualify. Um, down here, Matt, lane four. And on his left, closest to us, lane three, that's Paul Randall. And over there, lane six, is it, John? That's Neil Gard from Ottawa. And just coming home there in lane five, Vaughan Reed from North Shore. Now, we just have to see if Vaughan can make it through. Or will it be the fifth place getter from, uh, from the first heat? So, uh, yes, we're all back, John. Two microphones going. I was enjoying having a bit of a break. Thank you, mate. So some really good racing here as they emerge. It's not quite so sexy out there now, John. You know, we, we'd just like to see them emerging from the fog. Uh, now it's clearing up quite substantially for the moment, but it's still threatening out there. But that's not affecting the racing on this uh, beautiful water condition. No wind at all, the athletes really enjoying it, warming up nicely, so a couple of good masters races, the two heats of the 45 to 54, 1000, and now we move into the 18 and under women's K1 1000, this is a straight final, and we've got some familiar names back here, Poppy Barnes from Waitara in lane 2, Rosara Davis of North Shore, Grace Richardson, Bay of Plenty, uh, Alexis Toy is in uh, lane five from Wanganui. Uh, Hannah Webb of Poverty Bay and Zoe Anderson of Wanganui. So a couple of Wanganui competitors there. Uh, Bay of Plenty, Poverty Bay, North Shore, Waitara. The women's 18 and under K1 1000. Straight final from way down the far end. And we can, in fact, see them at the moment. I totally agree, John. It's great to um, read out these names from yesteryear. I mean, Poppy Barnes, she seems she's like she's been around forever. And she's in the under 18. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's that sort of a standout name, isn't it? Yeah. She would have been starting, I mean, calling her out in the under 14s, of course. So great to see them back.
So this is a straight final, and then we have another straight final. That's the Masters men's uh, 35 to 44 K1. There are uh, five competitors in that. Then the Open and 23 and under men's K1 1000, two heats. And then we bring the start up to the 500 for the 16 and under men's K2. Big program already, and it's only just gone something like 9 o'clock, hasn't it? the who to come through we've got to start in this um, straight final the under 18 women's a k1 1000 of course we've got a, had a world, previous world champion and this Tennille Hatton over a uh, thousand meters brilliant paddler so we've had some uh, great athletes in uh, mm. over the thousand meters not traditionally a, a race at the Fira Six raced in John, but it's uh, good to see Emma Kemp. Gosh, I saw her racing up against the blokes and giving the, giving them a good run for the for their money. So uh, still very early to see who is coming out of the fog. <laughs> I don't know whether that's somebody in the return lane, but it may be just in lane two from Whitetra. Our Poppy Barnes. John, you're on the... Uh yeah, I look, I look across there and I see Barnes in, on the inside and then on the outside as well. They look to be the two that Zoe Anderson and maybe H Hannah Webb of Poverty Bay on the far side, but certainly Bar um, Poppy Barnes looks to be the one who's made the best of the starts and, and could even be uh, up to a boat length clear. But we'll get a better indication soon when, <laughs> when we can see them clearly. <laughs> So 1,000 this is, K1 under 18s. Yeah, I'm just looking at uh, the cadence of Poppy. She's got the bit between her teeth here. She's obviously great coaching. Just said, look, let's just take it out for your first 500, which she's duly done for this uh, straight final under 18. Be great to start the whole three days with a gold medal in your back pocket with yeah, time yeah. on your first race. That's surely... If got to set you up for the whole weekend I'm not sure she's got it all her own way though no. as we, they come into view now 500 yeah. gone and uh, certainly Barnes but over out on the side uh, Zoe Anderson, Hannah Webb, Alexis Toy yeah Hannah I think is popping you know putting her hand up there so to speak she's got a great cadence too well, it's a straight final we expect that so they've come through the 500 comfortably. Well, for us, comfortably. Yeah. Be, uh, heart rates would, would be well and truly up. But I'm certainly still going to give that to maybe Poppy uh, here over there in lane two and Hannah in uh, lane six from the very strong Poverty Bay Club. And I'm all, oh, see, just as I was saying that, just on... Uh, the left, Poverty Bay, that looked like uh, Alexis Toy had a bit of a kick. You can get a good view now of their their stroke and yeah. compare them a bit to John and you know that that white boat out there, second from the outside of Hannah Webb, that looks to be just moving forward now. So while it looks as though Barnes might just have it down on the inside. I think that attack is coming yes. well and truly on the outside as well. And it'll come from Hannah Webb. Oh, just see that. Gosh, you can just see that pick up. That's got to get the coach's big smile on their face. Look at that change in pace. Oh, yeah. Whoa. 200 to go coming down to the yellow boys with 100 to go. That was a great kick by the uh, Poverty Bay athlete, Hannah Webb. 
She's certainly leaning forward. She's into it. This is a real finishing drive from her. And if Barnes looks across, and she just does, across to her right and sees that she's been swallowed up totally by the others on the outside. So Hannah Webb coming through in a mighty finish on her inside. Alexis Toy of Whanganui will be up for second place. And maybe out on the far side, Anderson will get in ahead of Barnes. It's very close. It is going to be Anderson who gets third. And the four athletes very close together going through the finish here. Uh, but no doubt about it, a great last 100 or so from Hannah Webb gives her the win from Poverty Bay. So unofficially, yes, I would give that to uh, Hannah. Well done over there in lane six. So I think all three medals came over there in those far lanes. So uh, Hannah, Alexis and Zoe. Well done, Wanganui. Picking up a second and a third. That all goes towards the club points. So that's... Uh, the under 18 women's K. Gosh, it's a long way down there. <laughs> when, you, when it's in the fog and you can't even see the finish line. So uh, that rolls us into uh, event nine, which is the uh, Masters men. We're going to jump up an age group here, though. This is the uh, th uh, down, rather, down the uh, 35 to 44. So uh, this is a straight final. So no athletes in uh, lanes one or two. So in Waitra, we've got Graham O'Grady, um, Poverty Bay, Kim Headley, Danny Morrison. Good to see you out here, Danny. Haven't seen you for a few years, but good to have you back. Dan Driscoll from Hawke's Bay. He's in lane six. And Carl Barnes from Waitra. So we've got um, two Waitra athletes, bookending in three and seven. Somewhere in the middle here, the other three athletes, Kim, Danny and Dan. So uh, a straight final for the Masters men, age groups 35 to 44. We just heard the um, who to go. So we've got... Uh, in lane five there, Danny Morrison, great athlete from a few years ago. Good to have him back. Of course, we see him around the surf scene. And so he's in uh, lane five, unaffiliated. So not with a club, but we'll certainly have him making the numbers up. And I would actually say out there in lane five it's certainly Danny that maybe might he'll be racing from memory just uh, shot out of the blocks but I'll certainly give it to him coming through the first 250 stroking very very strongly and perhaps on his left that would be um, Kim Headley from the Poverty Bay Still paddling very, very strongly. Lane five. That's uh, Danny. And making a good showing now over in the far side. Lane seven, Carl Barnes. Give that now to the uh, very outside lane, White Truck, lane seven. Carl Barnes coming through just from this angle. He'll be the first through the 500. Just dropped his rating down a little bit there. Just remember, folks, when you're doing your warm-up and ward down, just look at the K2 
Just slow your boats, please, chaps. Just for waiting for this race to come through. So straight final. This is the uh, Masters men, 35 to 44 age group. And so certainly out there, furthest, Carl Barnes, White Trip. Just knocking it back a bit now. <laughs> Looking down. You'd probably just see the finish line come in. Probably in this fog. That's it. Then he looks up. Goes, oh no, it's another 250 to go. Fog can be playing a mean thing. So Carl just cutting through the 250 boy line there. Great effort. Now the race, of course, now in this straight final looks like it's going to be between uh, Kim and Danny. So that, no doubt about your winner, unless there's going to be a tremendous kick from uh, second and third. But I think, safely to say, Carl will have this wrapped up. And here comes a big race. <laughs> All these guys, their hearts will be in their mouths. Great finish. Great finish coming from lane four. That's Kim Headley from Poverty Bay. Danny just can't quite match him. He's not giving up. So, yes, we'll give it to second spot. Well done to uh, Kim Headley. Well done, Danny. Good to see you back, mate. So uh, picked up a third and coming home there in fourth spot, Graham O'Grady from White Trap. A great race also coming out there in lane six, Dan Driscoll from the Hawks Bay. You can always tell the guys are tired, they just sit there. They don't want to take another stroke. Can the pontoon come to me? So that's our uh, Masters 35 to 44. Well done, lads. I dare say most of that was all raced off memory. <laughs> Looking at you, Danny Morrison. <laughs> and uh, congratulations once again. Right out there, Carl from the White Trick Club. Good effort. Right, got some uh, open. Here we go, folks. We haven't had enough excitement in the uh, Masters or the age group ladies. Here we go, the Open and Under 23 Men's K1 1000. Now what I like about this is they've combined the Under 23 with the Open and that'll give these younger men some, you know, impetus when they're racing mm. up against these um, older guys, more experienced guys. Um, you know, they'll be, they'll be racing, they'll know who their competition is, but even so, as they get down the course, they'll probably have a uh, permission to say, look, if, you, if, you're, if you're in the mix with the open, you give that open guy a go. You, you know, take yeah, him down call. a peg or two. Yeah. Yep. So, um, got uh, two heats here. So the first heat, no athlete in lane one. We've got two North Shore athletes, Clifton, uh, two of our Clifton and Michael Easterhausen. Yeah. We've got Max Brown, good to see Max back from the Wanganui Kayak, Ottawa, Thomas McGibbon, Lane 6, Kalani Gilbertson, and uh, we've just seen Kalani race, haven't we? And then we've got Zach Firkins from Poverty Bay in Lane 7. So they have started, they're all out nice and cleanly. Absolutely ideal out there at the moment. Nice to see uh, some of the spectators just heading down to get a better view of, of the finish. So you see plenty of action and a good learning spot too if you're new to the sport to get down there and watch how some of these more experienced athletes utilise that last 100 um, depending on the position, their position in the race. So 1,000 again, so six starters. We can see them out there as, as Mac has mentioned. Uh, Clifton on the inside. Uh, Oosterhausen alongside of him, 
But again, from the vantage point here, it looks as though most of that action's coming from the outside lane. So Zach Ferkins will certainly be up there, very experienced. Kalani Gilbertson, of course, and uh, Thomas McGibbon from Ottawa. So lanes five, six, and seven. Uh, lane four, that's uh, Max Brown, of course, such a, an outstanding performer in New Zealand boats over the years. So that's them. The leading four are on the outside, and those two in the inside are Tuva A. Clifton and Michael Isterhazen. So just giving right. down with a 500 to go. So these four athletes, they'll be well and truly look left, look right, say so yes. Yeah. I've, uh, you know, I'm here now. I've got a big program ahead of me for uh, these next three days. So they'll just settle back, probably knock knock a few percentage points back in their effort. As you mentioned, two heats of this. But, you know, in a heat and you're a competitive athlete, as these guys are, um, even though you go in with that idea of, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to paddle to qualify, but I don't want to qualify behind him. <laughs> yeah, there's a... You can, see... When you're racing here, because we're going to go from um, a heat to a final, but if you can race from a heat to a semi-final and then go on to a final, you can often know, particularly if you're one of the back heats, say if there's like four or five heats, and you can, you've already been told, well, who's going to be in the semi-final? So I, need, I really need to finish third here, so I'm not going to be in that athlete's semi-final, yeah, yeah. so I have a better chance to, uh, to make the final. That's making sense. If the officials see you screaming down the course and all of a sudden slow up and jockey for position, um, that can be a big DQ. So you don't want to uh, start playing silly games. They come down here. <laughs> These guys aren't uh, letting up. I'm just looking over in the far side here. So um, who's that? Zach. You can't tell me either. So just maybe down here on the inside, lane four going well indeed. That's, uh, yeah, that's uh, Max. Thomas McGibbon and four. Yep. Yeah. Maybe just Kalani. Oh, Max, oh, sorry, Max Brown and four, yeah. of course. And then in lane six, yeah. there's Kalani Gilbertson and on the far side, Zach Ferkins. And the coaster there is uh, Tom McGibbon. This is a big last 100 coming in here from Michael Esterhausen. So that's our, the first... So the, don't forget, folks, this is the um, open. That's our open men and our under-23. So we put them all together. So these guys here... Obviously, um, racing our Olympic hopefuls, coming up against them in the under-23. And, you know, you could see this guy here, he's going to the Olympics. He's right next door to me. I'll give him a run for his money. So, um, it's great racing. Right. The second heat of this uh, under-23 men's in the Open K1-1000. Uh, no paddler in lane one closest to us. So the first athlete we will see is Gene Prato from North Shore, Sam Ferkins from Poverty Bay in lane three, Grant Clancy, North Shore lane four, Quade Thompson, good to see Quade back. He's from Poverty Bay, look out for him, folks. Lane five, James Monroe, Otago, Liam Lace in lane seven, and Ben Nichols, lane eight. Gosh, it's just... Great reading out those names again. Yeah, year after year, and always performing well. Yes. We saw some, you know, a couple of seasons ago that James Monroe really slayed everyone. He was in outstanding form. So we'll see what he brings to the table this time. Quade Thompson, of course, and Sam Ferkins, all names that we see a lot of. Sam and uh, brother Zach. And Liam, of course, yeah. from the Wanganui. He was a great age grouper. So this is the second heat of the open and under-23 men's K1-1000. They're all set to go.
We're just sitting quietly waiting. We can actually see the start line now, which is slightly encouraging. And the splash as the blades hit the water as they get the start. So this is the second heat of the Open and uh, 23 and under men's. K1 1000, Prato of North Shore is on the inside in lane two. Uh, Firkins, Sam Firkins of Poverty Bay. In lane four is Grant Clancy. Quade Thompson in lane five. Uh, James Monroe is in six. Then Liam Lace and Ben Nichols. They take the outside lanes. Hard to split them from this difference, uh, from this distance. Yeah, it looks like they've all had a great start. Yeah. I think with these uh, inside two lanes, so who will that be? That's uh, Poverty Bay Lane 5, that's Quaid. And maybe James Monroe going very well. Don't forget, it's only a heat, so yeah. it'll be your first four through. You've still got to do it, you know, you've still got to race out there, do a good start. A lot easier to win from the front when you're coming down the last 200, 300 metres to go rather than go, oh, all I need is a, a fourth <laughs> spot and try to catch up. Well, I quite like Clancy from this distance out of lane four from North Shore, but Monroe also there in lane six. start to make out the red bib from Poverty Bay coming yeah. through in the fog, John. That's got to be Quade Thompson from Poverty Bay. Nice big. And he almost looks like he's dawdling, doesn't it? Not the sort of <laughs> thing you want to use as an example to your younger athletes. That's just on his left, James Monroe. Just nice, slow. Something's happening under the water, though, with those blades. Oh, yeah. He's, he's got a very slow technique, but he's uh, obviously getting that boat through the water. So now you can pick them out quite nicely. Lanes four and five they are dominating this race at the moment, but certainly lane five, as Mac has mentioned, Quade Thompson from the famous Poverty Bay Kayak Club has the edge at the moment. So we've got our first two safely home. We're going to... I'm just looking at the four behind. We're going to have two from them, but who's... Oh, look at that big kick in the yellow boat closest to us. That's uh, Gene from North Shore. He's throwing down the gauntlet a bit to here to see if I make sure that he gets up to qualify. Certainly Monroe looking good on the orange in lane six. So Thompson's coming through to the 100 and looking comfortable, a good boat length and a bit clear on his left. That's Grant Clancy of North Shore. And on his right, but a fair way back is Monroe. Just doing enough. Oh, just saw it. <laughs> just a little kick here, yeah, but I think Quade's got his measure, and then they just thought, "All right, it was a nice enough silly bug." Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll just, yeah, we'll qualify. All but look at this, John coming here. As I said, lane two in the yellow boat, Gene North Shore. He's hit one of these guys, lane seven. You know, we're going to get our first four and our fifth fastest. So that's our first four. Oh, very yep. close. Yeah, but I think Prato got there. He did get there. North Shore, lane seven then. We'll be wondering about the next race. That's Liam Lace of Whanganui. But no doubt about the winner of this first heat was Quade Thompson, Grant Clancy second, Monroe third, and Prato fourth. That's the second heat of the 23 and under and open men's K1-1000. So we'll find out who gets through to the final as we move now into the 16 and under men's K2-500. So they're all just starting to line up now. So, yes, coming down here for the 500. So at least we'll see some splash. Oh, some splash out of the start. That's, and the drone's up there in the sky, so that's a good thing. Now that the... Uh, 
fog's lifted. So no crew in lane one. We've got Wanganui, Worcester and Tullock uh, in lane three. Dooney and uh, Gilbert from North Shore. Lane four, Poverty Bay, Kinsella and Shrup. In lane five, home crew, Karapiro, good to see you, Cartwright and Eloff. And in lane six, Hawke's Bay, Hutchinson and Burgess. Just coming up to the start. So this is the 16 and under men's K2500. privileged to see some great courses and around the world to, to paddle on and and I just looking at, at that fog lifts I would put this course you know right up there with some of the best I've ever paddled on John mm. you know one thing you can with a lot of the courses is you have a prevailing wind and if it's blowing you you have to suck that up and so it's either going to be a headwind or a tailwind but with a beautiful lake like this and its depth you, know, you can duck around the corner you can get some nice shelter from somewhere sure you might have to cross the lake and have a bit of discomfort as the wind is blowing to your right or to your left but you know you can paddle up one of the further reaches and you know get some shelter not many courses allow uh -huh allow you to do that of course our predominant wind being the southerly you can tuck in along the edges of mm. course you're still going to get the blow but at least you know you can get out there and train uh, some other countries you know I'm just thinking of this they're going into their summer now of course the Scandinavian I'm keeping in touch with a lot of the uh, former athletes over there and they said they've had one tough winter all the lakes and rivers have all been iced over and so um yeah, they breed them tough up there. Yeah, we're fortunate here, aren't we, that yeah. we've got this fabulous natural course for more than just uh, canoeing, of course. Yeah. Such a great venue, having hosted world championships in rowing, gosh, way back. So we've got to start here yeah. in our uh, 16 and under, so... There'll be a few young men in these, but whoa. Oh, just that second crew in, that looked like the North Shore pairing of Dooney and Gilbert. Just a wee bit out of time. Oh, they're getting it together. No. All right. So maybe just a uh, few problems there or steering problems, but certainly in the middle here, Poverty Bay, well drilled, can sell and Shrup. Going very, very well. And John, what? On the inside, yeah, Louis. Worcester and Tullock yeah. looking very good. White boat on the inside, so this is turning out to be a three boat cl classic here with Worcester and Tullock of Wanganui, uh, Kinsella and Thrupp of uh, Poverty Bay, and uh, Hutchinson and Burgess of Hawke's Bay <laughs> in a line. That poor old North Shore uh, pairing. They've got 500 metres to race. They were over to the left-hand side of their lane. Now they're over the right, so they're going to probably end up racing about 600 metres. Never mind. Just down here on the inside, a beautiful kick by Wanganui. You can just see them pick that up. So even though it's a heat, coaches are probably saying, you know, just go through your race plan, open up your muscles, your cardiovascular system, get all your breathing right. So and North Shore got it together for a while and it's that frustrating for them. They know they can do it. They're battling to keep that combo together. But as we come down to 50 metres to go, this is a tight tussle, but it is going to be Wanganui, Wooster and Tullock on the inside, or will they get pipped? They are holding off beautiful form from them, really good. And uh, they come to the line and might just hold it. Well, that's yeah. close. I think they glance across from their blue boat across to lane uh, six on the far side, which was Hutchison and Burgess of Hawke's Bay. And this is very, very close. We're just going to watch it here on the live streaming and see whether that's, that helps us at all. Yeah, they, oh, 
they came from nowhere. Well, when I say nowhere, they were within the within the money, of course, but they were a good half boat back. Yeah. With you know, as soon as they hit that uh, yellow, oh, just looking at the live stream. <laughs> well, I, I was, I know, I was going to say instantly, you know, Wooster and Tullock of Whanganui, but yeah. I think we'll wait for someone better placed with a camera to give us the official word on that. But a very good finish. It's uh, heat one of two. I think that's our tightest race thus far. Yep. So, uh, well done, team. Well, at least you've made it through to the final. That's the main thing. So, our second heat for the uh, 16 and under men's K2 500. Again, it's uh, five crews. No crews in lanes one or two. Closest to us is North Shore, Ormond in France. Hawke's Bay in lane four. Uh, that's uh, Baker and Nukute. We've got uh, Ottawa and Monk and McDonald. And then six, Karapiro, Ferguson and Lee. And seven, North Shore, both are in Scotland. Just looking at these uh, names, Ottawa with the McDonald, yeah. Karapiro, Ferguson, McDonald, Ferguson, Ferguson, McDonald. That, yeah. Those names <laughs> ring a bell somewhere, John. <laughs> it's a while ago now, mate. It is. Of course, referring to um, the great pairing, Ian Ferguson and Paul McDonald. Oh, I thought you were talking about John McDonald. <laughs> So they're set to go down at the 500 start. He's a 16 and under. Just bringing them all up to line now. And they get the, bow, they get the hooter and they're away. And a pretty smooth looking start too. That's uh, Poverty Bay, oh, sorry, uh, North Shore on the inside, and Hawke's Bay, Arawa in the centre, Karapero and North Shore on the outside. And that uh, second from the inside on that Hawke's Bay combination of Baker and Nukatai, they're looking good, but alongside them on the right, that's Monk and McDonald of Arawa. And uh, outside as well in lane seven, Borta and Scott from North Shore. I'm going to say, they really got out of the blocks, Monk and McDonald yeah. from the Ottawa. They got out well, but, big but, look over there, North Shore, Botha and Scott have really settled into their work. And they got the boat running nicely. Ooh, just a wee support stroke from the back paddler and the Ottawa crew. Oh, that's still first through the line, but it's the crew over the far side, both and Scott. I just, they just look to me, John. They've just got that. They were slower out of the start, but they just got it looks like a little bit of a better boat run. They certainly closed the gap, that's yeah. for sure, with 100 to go. Getting good support from the side on the embankment here. They are nose and nose now. Yeah. Monk and McDonald of Arawa in the black. Wow, this could be a long 50 metres for them. Close. Black nose just in front. White nose in front now. White nose, and it is a great finish there on lane seven from Buta and Scott of North Shore. Gets them up to beat McDonald and Monk. In lane five and uh, lane four, that's the Hawks Bay combination of Baker and Nukatai in third. Coming through there in lane six, it's Carapiro. And in the blue coming through now is the North Shore combination, Orman and France. That's the second heat of the 16 and under men's K2 500. Just looking at that race, there would have been so much learning to be done, both, you know, from the athletes and the coaches. Okay, so great dress rehearsal for the final. You'd look down there, John, honestly, I thought they were racing a final. They didn't let up. And that's to be expected from, you know, young young athletes. We just got to go out there and we'll race every single race as a final. I don't think really care what sport you're in, as long as you do that. The time to play, do the silliness, that'll come down, <laughs> that comes with time. Yeah. You just need to look at the Masters 
those uh, old heads that do that. So just saying that, just we saw the crew of the Ottawa crew. Now I did. I think they jumped out very, very well. But the North Shore uh, over the far side, that North Shore pairing of Botha and Scott, their boat run just looked a little bit better. So short story long, they will probably their coach will say to them, right bit of a slow start so for the final we want to see you get out faster uh, and and hold it as you did and for the crew they got second from Ottawa their coach is saying brilliant start now you've got to hold it out a little bit because we saw how close it was at the lines I'm like, looking forward yeah. to the, the final of those two so the good news is it was a tough race but you get to do it again in a final so we're out of the heats and semis, as it were. We're back into another final. Yay. This is a Blue Ribbon event too. Open Women's K4 500. So we'll see some hiss and a roar here. Just quickly looking through. So um, I think North Shore have got a very, very good chance of pulling a medal here because we've got North Shore in lane 2, 3 and 4 and Ottawa in lane 5. So we could see quite possibly a clean sweep first, second and third, John, coming from a club, a very strong club of the North Shore. But uh, hey, that Christchurch club of Ottawa, they're not gonna they're not gonna let that happen. They'll be in there, they'll be in the mix for sure. This is the open women's K four five hundred. And I'm just looking at the Ottawa they've got Garrett, McGibbon, Joyce and McCullough. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty good there. lineup, yeah. Yeah. So um, just thinking of the coach, old Gav of the North Shore Club, he will, um, he will he will put all his eggs in one basket. He'll put you know his A crew. There will be a definite North Shore crew flying out there. After all, this is a national title. So the four crews, the non North Shore crew, is on the outside. That's Aroa. As we wait the start. This is a final, a women's K4 500. They go and they do get away smoothly too so watch for this Ottawa on the outside in lane five North Shore and the three inside lanes which one of them is going to capture the title this women's K4 500 so I know who the probably the stronger uh, it looked like over there closest to the Ottawa crew lane four they got out very, very strongly. <laughs> you just say yeah. that. You, I was going to say, you've just mentioned yeah. that. And on and the inside there. On their, on their inside there, yeah. their sister crew, as it were. We've got Cleghorn, Westlake, uh, Demolopolis, and Wodehouse. There's some names I haven't seen. But anywho, they've uh, very, another very strong. But here we go. They've settled into it. So it certainly looks like the North Shore out there in lane four. Clifton, Saunders, Tates and Birmingham. They had, gosh, they were out very, very quickly. Oh, that looks now polished. This. Really <laughs> polished. the sister crew. So it could be a North Shore first and second here. Gosh, that, that second crew, gosh, they're looking good. It's just whether wow. we can have a kick from Ottawa to get up to second or third. But it certainly looked like North Shore at that day. I don't know who's calling the shots and the crew closest to us, John, in lane three. But they are not oh. sitting down. <laughs> they are taking it right to them. Good racing, ladies. Yeah, forced a big reaction yes. from 
lane four. That's only half a boat length and then a boat length back to Arawa. So it is a North Shore victory for the team in lane four. And that is uh, Clifton and Saunders, Tate and Birmingham. But they wouldn't have taken much to be aware. A quick glance to the left to see the surge coming from their sister club, Cleghorn, Westlake, Demopolis and uh, Wodehouse. That was pretty, pretty impressive stuff. Ottawa taking third. Garrett, McGibbon, Joyce and McCullum. That's the title going to North Shore, the Women's Open K4 500. Just coming in here is the uh, other. Oh, look at them cheering on! That's great sportsmanship. That looks like is that a bottle of champagne on the back of that boat, John? Looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's too old. I mean, we should be up here talking about things like that. <laughs> Cup of tea, perhaps. Gosh, this is an exciting race. So that was a straight final. Let's just see how the clubs get their points. All right. So the. Um, Three North Shore entrance into that. So my maths is correct. That's 12 athletes. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. And I that need the calculator for and that. I, I was going to say, that's not bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so straight final. That was the Open Women's K4 500. And I would say, safely say, that that title goes to North Shore. Well done, ladies. So uh, back into the heats. Under 16, K2 500, under 16 women's, event 15, lane 2, Poverty Bay, lane 3, Ottawa, lane 4, North Shore, lane 5, Hawke's Bay, and lane 6, Eastern Bay. Now, Mighty River Domain has warned us that cars are parking down the roadways. Uh, this is prohibited. So all cars need to park in the top car park at gate three only. All right? Please make sure members are doing the right thing so they don't get towed. I'm just reading a text message there, but certainly it says um, Mighty River Domain has warned us that cars are parking down the roadways, which is prohibited. So all cars need to park in the top car park at gate three only. All right, you don't want to end up finding your car's not there when you go to home tonight. So event 15, heat one. This is our under 16 women's K2 500 just coming into the start now. So lane two, Poverty Bay, lane three, Ottawa, lane four, North Shore, lane five, Hawks Bay, and lane six, Eastern Bay. This has been called up by the starter. Oh, getting some beautiful drone shots folks if uh, you've got a flash phone you can look at this going live just a wee bit of a delay but good out of the blocks I would give that to the Ottawa pairing Panea and Crossan from uh, in lane 3 great start by them and they're still going over the far side Eastern Bay Panea and Roland. So I'll just give it to these two crews as our conditions are still perfect. Good fair racing as they've finished the first 250 metres almost.
So this is just the uh, the heat, just the heat, just the heat. So it's uh, the first heat. There's two heats. So coming down here, they're sorting themselves out now. So we've definitely got our first two place getters here. We've got Ottawa in lane three, nice and strong. And um, oh, I couldn't pick that between the two of them. And over the far side, lane six, Eastern Bay. Great racing here. I can see from these young ladies there, they know, they probably know in the back of their minds that, yes, we've got this qualified. Yes, we know we do have another race to come. But, oh, they're still racing so hard. Maybe now just pulling out in front, John, that would be, say, Eastern lane, Bay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, lane three, Ottawa Club maybe just, well, we called that before and that was happening, we looked down here on the inside and all the action was over the far side, yeah. is it going to happen again? No, maybe not. So first boat to qualify for the final, well done ladies, very close racing and I dare say in lane five here, that's Hawke's Bay. Stovall and Hod Hodgson. So lanes three and six, that was Arawa and Eastern Bay. With, uh, just looking back through some of the results this morning, the first event we had was the Open Men's K4500, uh, which was won by uh, Brown, Lagarth, Imri and Clancy, that's the Canoe Racing New Zealand team. They finished uh, just a bit under a second ahead of Raisa, Gilbertson, Nataki and Bull from North Shore with Poverty Bay taking the bronze medal. That was our first race and that was a, a final. And then the 14 and under women's K2 500 uh, was won by Parker and Mielo of Hawke's Bay. Hamilton and Ohio Hall of Hawke's Bay were second, and Willoughby and Atta from Poverty Bay were third. So that's uh, those first two titles uh, sorted. It's a good way to start the, the event. Uh, we had the 18 and under women's K1 1000 was won by Hannah Webb, so the title going to Poverty Bay. Alexis Toy of Whanganui was second, and Zoe Anderson Whanganui was in third place. It was really good to get a few of the finals there. And as uh, John McDonald was so excited about the Masters men's 35 to 44, Carl Barnes did win that quite comfortably from Kim Headley and Danny Morrison. So just as we get into our final heat, heat two of two, all six crews are out there. So uh, closest to us, the Wanganui pairing in lane three, Ottawa in lane four, Hawks Bay in lane five, po first Poverty Bay crew in lane six, Mana in lane seven, and another Poverty Bay crew over there in lane eight. They've called into the starters' hands. And we just had it confirmed that the women's, the previous event, the K4500, was won by Clifton, Saunders, Tate and Birmingham from North Shore. And North Shore's second crew were in second place, the silver medal, and uh, Ottawa took the bronze. So these young ladies, I, I just never fails to put a smile on my face, uh, John. You know, they, yes, they don't have the strength um, as uh, Dame Lisa has, you know, pulling that boat up out of the water. But hey, you see them off on the end on the other side more. And as each stroke goes, a little bit more, you know, as they're getting the boat up and out of the water. And then they don't sit, they just keep it going, keep it going again. And that's exactly what we saw with this, uh, was it the Wanganui crew here? Um, Anderson and Toy. Yeah, they got the best start. Yes. That's in the white boat, and they've managed to maintain that, but their challenges right from the start came out 
And that uh, combination that's three to the right of them out there, and you can see them now starting to emerge. This could be another of those close finishes. With Whanganui there, Poverty Bay in lane six. Mana in seven, another Poverty Bay crew over in lane eight. And there's no doubt about where the action has been right from the start. Whanganui and Poverty Bay. There's um, the earlier the underage, or was it the uh, under 18 men's, that K2 from Wanganui, showing great technique. So there's, that's the best thing to do for these young athletes to come through is, of course, get their technique right. The strength and the fitness will come. But nothing will be worse. And, oh, I'm as fit as a buck rat but I've got a terrible <laughs> technique and for the first two or three years very very fit and then you're trying to change your technique so beautiful technique shown by some of these crews at a young age good coaching program I think happening through New Zealand for these athletes different uh, events that we have around the country now Well, as they begin to come through to the return area, Alexis Toy and Zoe Anderson of Whanganui have won that 16 and under women's K2 500. We're getting through the program. We come to a couple of semi-finals now, the 18 and under men's K1 1000. And the Masters men's semi-final as well. So this semi, when they're ready to go, I'm not sure what the time is now. We look to be on time or maybe ahead of time. But we're down at the 1,000 again. This is the event 17. Charlie Mayston, Riley Scott, Ollie Egan, Liam Rogers, Matt McKendry, Noah Andrews, Julian De Silva, James Hamblin, and Jake Butter. 18 and under men's K1 1,000.
So we've got a uh, semi-final down here. We've obviously got our finalists. John and I were just trying to work that out. Gosh, it takes a year, doesn't it, John, <laughs> before we can. <laughs> so we've got our finalists from the, from the heat. So we've just got one semi coming up here for our, our under-18 men's to make up the numbers for a uh, full nine-lane final. And then we have another semi coming up for our Masters uh, men, which is uh, the age group of 45 to 54 there were so many of them. So coming up into the 500, these guys are all racing for a spot in their under 18 men's uh, K1 1000 final. Ollie Egan's looking good out there in lane three from Poverty Bay. He's third from the inside here, uh, but right alongside him, he's, <laughs> he's getting it from Liam Rogers of Arawa. And uh, further out there is uh, Matt McKendry of Poverty Bay. So, so they've gone through that halfway stage. We're going to see some action very shortly. So Ollie Egan, maybe now uh, Matt McKendry in lane five and two out from him, Julian De Silva. Yeah, I can still see what well, we must be four athletes racing for two to three spots here so sadly somebody's going to miss out yeah, yeah. so it's good racing i can see you know that we've got those uh guys there in lanes three and four john as you say ollie and liam also yeah. matt from poverty bay and uh and the silver and seven but really there's two in the center of the course look to have it at the moment but we've seen some great finishes as we come to the 100 this is uh, 18 and under Matt McKendry and the white on the inside is Liam Rogers You've got the numbers there, lanes four and five. You think Liam Rogers has just got this at the moment, but only just. Finish line in sight. Now he digs it in. Oh, and he's just starting to surge nicely. <laughs> so Liam Rogers of Arawa now surges out and eases up with a boat length to go. There'll be a coach or two saying, no, 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 drive it through, mate. Lane five, he had it easily though, Matt McKendry. And then in lane three, Ollie Egan of Poverty Bay. And in lane seven, that's Julian De Silva. So those four had it pretty much to themselves over the thousand right through. Noah Andrews and uh, Jake Borta. Inside here, that's Charlie Mayston. And that leaves Riley Scott of North Shore. That gives us a full nine lane final. That must be for the later part of the day for the under 18 men's. So we have another uh, semi coming up here. This is the Masters men, 45 to 54. see uh, what do we got there John four, yeah, four of them. yeah Vaughan four. Reed yeah, yeah Vaughan Reed on the inside there and Neil Gard Ryan McBriarty and David Sleep it's the Masters men's semi 45 to 54 an exhausting way to start the day a thousand meters it's a healthy Masters group in New Zealand though isn't it there is yeah 
uh, not only just for the uh, sprints, but also um, over marathon, and of course, all all these guys are racing the um, uh, out in the surf, long distance surf ski racing. Nothing like the old taste of salt water. see at this stage we've got the benefit of the drone back up now haven't we John mm. just looking at this all uh, maybe on the closest to us in the blue and or the blue striped boat um, that is uh, Vaughan Reed from North Shore and then it staggers out in an arrowhead formation sort of a thing on his right and then on his right and then on his right <laughs> So um, just on the inside here, certainly Vaughan, second Neil, third Ryan, and fourth David. I like your description of that, in an arrowhead sort of a thing. <laughs> yes, sort of a thing <laughs> formation. Well, it's not really, is it? No, half no, an that, arrow. half an arrow, yeah. 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 But it uh, tapers off over to the far side. Mm. <laughs> Some of these guys are gonna to to get a result in the thousand. They'll have to have, have raced three thousand meters, and they wouldn't have done that for a while. <laughs> they were probably racing in the opens. So they got the final at eleven twenty-five. So this. Well, you that's know, he's to recover. Yeah, isn't it? It's that's an hour. hour. <laughs> <laughs> and their third race of the morning. Yeah. So nothing's changed out there. You can see quite clearly now that it is uh, Vaughan Reed, Neil Gard, Ryan McBriarty, uh, and just um, closing up a little bit on McBriarty is David Sleep. Masters men because this is the 45 to 54 so you might have just hopped in so there's 10 years difference but <laughs> could be yeah. quite conceivably between these guys so often the guys who are in the, at the 54 they can't wait to jump up to the next age group which is probably the 55 to uh, 64 age group sort of like that seniors golf yeah. tour isn't it you know as soon as you hit the lower limit you're in there and making the most of it it looks uh vaughan reed holding this comfortably neil guard is second i just want to do a few of these uh, i mean some paddlers who've been paddling or paddled when they were younger and then come back to it for masters they do do they some do yeah. some also just start at masters you know have a go at it oh yes these, it's the case in point, these names, I I never raced against any of these guys. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Mind you, they're a, an age group down where I would be, but yeah, they've um, come, hopped straight, straight through into the Masters. And I think that's the, um, what happened there was the surf ski racing event, and um, that's great. And from there, they, it's so enjoyable that they maybe says, oh, look, let's come to our nationals, we'll go to the Blue Lakes start racing into the K1s. can get expensive though, these boats and the price of the paddles and you have a quiver of boats, I'll have this one for these conditions and this one for these conditions. And of course they're all made out of the, the carbon fibre and Kevlar. And as they like motor vehicles, a new model comes out could be a hundredth of a cent second faster. More, you know, so we've, we've got to you know, sell this one and probably the worst for that is a, in our sister sports, surf life saving, surf skis, they, every year they're bringing out a new model. And you've got to keep up with it. Oh, you do. 
There we go. That's the Masters men's uh, semi-final. As I said, the uh, final is in about an hour's time. Uh, more Masters now. Up in age group, 55 plus. K1-1000. Uh, down there, Grant Morris, Hawke's Bay, Chris Emmett, Bay of Plenty, Derek Stewart, North Shore and Jeff Mould, Poverty Bay, back again. So it's all running smoothly today and we uh, must congratulate those who've uh, organised this event again and uh, it only runs smoothly if the competitors and those associated with each race are on the ball and they have been so far, so well done. So there's some splashing of the water there as we see Morris on the inside, Emmett in lane four, Stewart in lane five and Mould in lane six. This is a straight final, Masters men's 55 plus. Maybe just coming out there as uh, Emmett and on his inside closest to us. Grant Morris from Hawke's Bay. Just looking at our drone view now with 2.50 gone. John, I'd, I think I'd certainly give that to Chris Emmett. Lane 4, Bay of Plenty. I'm going to see these guys having their cup of tea tonight just saying, oh, we raced three 1,000s to get a result. You guys just raced one 1,000 <laughs> to get your result. And there will be some bickering and quarrelling and saying who's the better Masters athletes and so on and so forth. But, oh, looking, stretching it now, coming up to the 500 to go, and good, clear boat length ahead. Chris Emmett out of the Bay of Plenty. This is for a straight final, 55-plus Masters men. Beautiful boat run in these conditions. <laughs> the only thing I think these guys would be wanting is, is a tailwind, John. <laughs> yes. well, they're never happy. They'll yeah. never happy. But if they did get a tailwind, they'd probably oh, it's too strong, too strong a tailwind. So spectacular pictures yeah. are being gathered by the drone, showing a great. Um, Shadows from the trees on the far side, the deep water you can see, and it's uh, just a lovely setting all round. As we come back to, as they've gone through that 500, and certainly uh, Chris Emmett has this well in control. It's great getting the. Uh in very, very fair conditions like this is getting the times and comparing the times because it'd be pretty accurate. You know how the, the Masters men in the different age groups. Chris will be there. He's not one to do that actually, but I would. I'd go look <laughs> in this age group. You know, that would have put me second in the, in the 45 age group. Dreams are free. Certainly coming down here, 2.50 to go. Chris Emmett, good three boat lengths ahead now. He'll settle in. Looking very good. Good surf ski exponent as well in the rough. But he's just slowly stretched his lead from start to finish. One of our uh, New Zealand selectors too, John, Chris Emmett. So he's not only there looking at the athletes who ascend to the Olympics, he's out there doing it, which is always good, knowing what they had to be put going, going through. So coming down here, less than 100 to go, certainly looks like he'll wrap this up 
in lane four, Chris Emmett from the Bay of Plenty Club. On his left, lane three, pushing them all the way, that was uh, Grant Moorish from the uh, Hawks Bay. And third spot, I did that to lane five, is it? From uh, North Shore, Derek Stewart. Yep. Pick up a no, bronze medal. <coughs> of course, this is all club points. Masters, everybody gets, the age groups all get put in to help towards your club. Coming home here now, lane six. Jeff Mould from Poverty Bay. Well done, Jeff. I think that's our Masters all out. So we got uh, four heats now of uh, the under 14 men's K1 500. So we can see them all like, gosh, that's good numbers. Isn't under it? Yes, yeah, great numbers. Heats. So we got North Shore Lane 2, uh, Lane 2 and 3 North Shore athletes. Uh, Whitra in Lane 4, another athlete from North Shore in Lane 5. Lane 6, Hawks Bay, Lane 7, Poverty Bay, and Lane 8, Bay of Plenty. Yes. That's a good mix. Seeing lots from Hawke's Bay, so the under 14, the youth development there is impressive. As of course we see from North Shore, the, you know, always a big contender for the title, the team's title. Starters clocking up some miles, 500 down to the thousand, back to the 500 again. <laughs> Just look at the, the bank of athletes ready to, to slot in behind, ready to go John over there on the right hand side. No wonder this thing's running so smoothly. And a great start away for this under 14 men's. We got Four heats. This is the first heat. Very early to, to tell, but maybe just on the inside lanes. Lanes two and three. They're the two North Shore athletes. Mike's son and Kirill. Ooh. Oh, Leskovsky. Leskovsky, yeah. So two North Shore. And, and I think you're right, they, those two seem to get away the better of the lot. The lot. Uh, certainly more advanced than on lanes uh, four and five. Again, you cast your eye out to the far side and you see uh, Wainohu of uh, Poverty Bay. But really it looks like it's all down here on the inside. Mac, Mike Sun of North Shore and uh, Kirill Leoskovsky of North Shore. Those are the two with Leoskovsky now starting to, to dominate out of lane three. So we're going to get some uh, semi-finals for sure. Maybe these, I don't know. Oh, just on, who was that? That's on Mike from North Shore. Just had a re- we whoopsie. We whoopsie. Didn't I don't think it mattered much. But we're certainly probably gonna have say I don't know how the race plan goes here, maybe the first one through to the final and two, three and four go through to the semi. Probably have a good two semis here. He's recovered well though. He has. Yeah, Mike Son of North Shore. He's closing that gap. He's in the white boat and he's closing up on the man on his inside with that orange craft, that's uh, Leoskovsky of North Shore as well. So the two North Shore paddlers doing it well. Lane uh, 7, Poverty Bay, doing very, very well over the far side. Oh, look at this yellow thing coming through. Yes. Uh, with blistering speed through the centre. That's um, Noah Elmiger of North Shore. He Ooh. might even get up to take <laughs> this. Where on earth did he come from? Brilliant yeah. finish from him. And he I might get up to... Oh, Ooh. that's dead heatish. Three and five and two in third place. If he had kicked just one stroke earlier, John, as I can see his dad saying that. One stroke earlier, he might have taken that cleanly. Oh. But we're just looking at the replay here. <laughs> God. 
a hundred out. He's two boat lengths behind. He had a great kick home. Well done, Noah. Unbelievable. In fact, the uh, son on the inside would have seen him first and think, oh, where's he come yeah. from? And all of a sudden, also, well, we see... Uh, the oh, he, what do you reckon? That, that's a close one. That's very, that's very close, everyone. Yeah. A great finish. Yeah. And a spectacular finish from North Shore's Noah Elmiger. So I just took a time of the Masters men's um, 45 to 54 over the 1,000. That was 419, around 420 for Vaughan Reed. And I'm just waiting now for the... Oh, and Chris Emmett did 425, so... That's about a five seconds yeah. difference, yeah. And I don't know, we, if we ask Chris Emmett how old he is, he probably wouldn't tell us, but he's been in this bracket yeah. for a couple of years, hasn't he? He has. We're just looking at Noah's mum, Kirsty, down there. So proud. Great race, just for the heats. Of course, he's thrown his, he's put his cards on the table. He's gone full Mazir now, hasn't he? Yeah. Because of all the athletes go, God, watch out for this guy, Noah. He, he's got the wickedest kick on him. When you think you've won the race, he could come through. That was pretty impressive. Yeah. Gosh. That's our best kick today. Right, second heat of four. So we've got uh, North Shore lane two, Karapiro in lane three. Uh, in lane four, we've got Bay of Plenty. Lane five, Ottawa. Lane six, Hawke's Bay. Lane 7, White Truck, and Lane 8, North Shore. So we can see Connor sleep in there from the White Truck. I think he had Dad racing in the Masters. So it looks like Braden Ferguson of Carapero in the second lane from the inside. He's in Lane 3. So he started very well indeed. If he's looking across, and he probably won't be, but three away from him is also pretty impressive. So that'll be McBriarty from Hawke's Bay. Or oh, no, maybe not, is it? Yes, yeah, Ferguson. So Ferguson, Braden, this is Braden Ferguson out of Carapero. Yeah. We've got wave after wave, like four heaps. And they're just coming around, sitting there, being called up. Yeah, like that keeps the program going. Yeah, it does. That's what, that'll keep Karen happy. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> it takes a bit it takes to a keep bit, Karen yeah. happy. <laughs> McBriarty, though, and well. yes. <laughs> in lane six. So look at this. This is Ferguson and McBriarty. Ferguson in three. That's on the inside as you're viewing from the bank. And McBriarty out in the centre, who just looks to be slightly smoother at the moment, or is he? No, there's a bit of a hiccup there too. And so we can see the good clear distance that these two athletes have got from the, you know, Mayo and the rest, but they <laughs> are still going hammer and dogs. Maybe just out there, lane six now. Yeah. So that's uh, Hawks Bay athlete, Cole. McBreety, yeah. he's, well he's upped his rate, he, he just looked, I thought he'd had a wee hiccup and then all of a sudden into it he goes, there, there you go, big powerful finish, nice and fast, Ferguson retains nice composure, very casual, through the lane he goes, finishes in second place, so now we come back to lane number five in front, that's uh, Daniel Panier. Lane four, gosh, who's that? We've got uh, Troy Worcester from Bay of Plenty going very well. Just a slight athlete. These guys are going to have to have three races before we can get a <laughs> final result. <laughs> You're up for it. Nakora Lomax, good on you, Nakora. In lane two, wearing the green top. And way over on the far side, that's Connor Sleep and Jaden Gull. So that halfway through this now, folks. So we've got our third heat coming up. Uh, they're ready to go just they about. Are, they are. You're no waiting around. We've got uh, our first athlete we see is in lane two from White Trap, Thomas. Uh, in lane three, North Shore. Lane four, Karapiro. Lane five, North Shore. Lane six, Hawke's Bay. Lane seven, Ottawa. And lane eight, White Trap. So another good 
spread throughout the nation. Our southern club there of uh, Ottawa, Christchurch Club. It's just a pity you're not eating at the moment, uh, John, because there's nice muffins being brought in for us. That's no. encouraging. And a banana, of course, to keep it healthy. Well, we can just hear through our radios the instructions coming out from the starter to these young paddlers. This is heat three, 14 and under, men's K1 500. They are all set, obviously, because they get the start. And it is uh, Wheatley of Whitera on the inside. Next to him is Umans of North Shore. Looks to have started well. There's Lucas from uh, the North Shore Club. Maybe all over the far side. Yeah, Semenov. Yeah. Wow. From Arawa in lane seven. It just exploded out of the start. And look, he looks from here to have about a three boat advantage already. That's pretty impressive. So he did get the best of the starts from Lucas of North Shore and that's the position as they head towards the 100 meters to go gosh he had a just a massive advantage didn't he right gosh, right from 500 the start meters. yeah we see these uh under 14 men's in the uh, he's racing a thousand meters. Gosh, he will be. He's just slowed it down now. Yeah, so this is impressive from Igor Semenov of Arawa. He's over on the far side in lane seven, and the yellow is Lucas Umans of uh, North Shore. Clearly in second place. That's uh, Jacob Robbers of Carapiro and behind him, and then Owen Hank, uh, Owen Hawk of North Shore. Those are the first four, but this is a almost a fifty, a thirty meter advantage uh, as they come to the line now, and a comfortable win, very comfortable and impressive from Igor Semenov of Arawa. He crosses now. And we wait for Lucas Ormans, who goes through now. So that gives you an indication of the advantage that the Ottawa man Igor Semenov had in heat three of the 14 and under men's K1 500. They're almost set to go way down the far end again at the 500 start. This is the fourth and final heat. So we've got uh, James Owens of uh, North Shore, Dom Rowland of Eastern Bay, Max Bowden, North Shore, teammate Carter Hills, uh, Gus Kinsella of Poverty Bay, Cooper Egan, Hawks Bay, and Ty Cation's Valvin, or Cation's Valvin of Waitara. Just every now and then there's a new name that trips us up, so I'm sure someone will tell us. So this is event 23, we're on target. Uh, next up uh, after this one, we're, we're just waiting for the start of this, it'll be the Open uh, K1 1000 semi-final.
for the last heat, all on the blocks, ready to go, waiting patiently. They've been given the all clear. It's event 23. Gosh, we're getting through them, aren't we, John? Due to go at 10.44. What's the time now? It is. 10.44. <laughs> yeah, we, won't, we won't put the hex on it. No. So a great start. I will just jumping out of the blocks here. Eastern Bay, Dom Rowland, Lane 3. Very good start from this young man. He's still going. Interesting to see his uh, time in Eagle's time. From the, from the data the coaches pour over. They're getting, getting good data too from such good conditions. So 250 done. It just certainly looks like our Eastern Bay athlete Dom Rowland there in lane three. Coming down with 100 to go. Dom led from start to finish. Might as well get, just the added, might as well get this over and done with, get this out of the way. Eh? <laughs> just another race. It's a good philosophy to have. The faster you get down, the sooner you get it over with. Great effort from this young man, Lane 3. Dom. Oh, Always think, you know, in a year's to two years' time to see if these guys are still yeah. doing this, and some give away quite early, but others keep keep at it. And if you've had a win like this uh, in in one of the heats, then it's encouraging you. You want to stay stay here. Dom Rowland has won this heat quite convincingly, um, and then just have a look and see how much they improve over the next two, three, four, five years. Yeah, and, if, and, and like if next year, if these guys all fronted up again and did this, how much difference would yeah. be with it? More coaching, more experience. When you say four or five years, John, that's only, that only puts it at 19. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but sort of starting to hit a peak about yeah. there, eh? Oh, uh, you yeah, are. absolutely. Let's come down here. James Owens, Lane 2, North Shore. A lot of experience. Oh, just a, that's our second swimmer. Of course, John, I haven't mentioned it. This is, this is the first week of the school holidays, so I'm presuming at the age of 14, most of these guys would uh, still be at school. Yep. What would you do on your school holidays? Well, if I look around uh, yeah. of youngsters that I know, yeah. most of them are probably still in bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just looking at some of those times too, Mac, that first one, um, Kirill Leoskovsky yeah. won in 2.27. Um, then we went to that, that next heat and uh, Cole McBretty did 2.16. So that's, that's really pushing it, eh? Yeah. And then the third one was 2.16. So Again? Uh, yeah. So I Igor and uh, Kirill both doing about the same time. And we'll get this one soon so you know they're pushing it through pretty impressive so that leads to the fact that we expect good semis and finals oh, yes. out of this yeah gosh look at that mill pond out there at its best now we've got athletes way down at the thousand again <laughs> these starters are clocking up the k's as i say so we've got the uh open men k1 1000 this is their semi so seven athletes in it, and lane one, 
Ben Nichols from the Ottawa Club, Michael Eusterhausen from North Shore in Lane 2, Liam Lace, Wanganui Lane 3, Jean Prato from North Shore in Lane 4, Thomas McGibbon, Ottawa in Lane 5, uh, Tuva Clifton, Lane 6, North Shore, and over the far side uh, in Lane 7 is Sammy Firkins from Poverty Bay. So McGibbon finished fourth in his heat. It was won by Gilbertson from Brown and Firkins, Zach Firkins. So he, he has got through via being fourth in his particular heat this morning. Good start. Nice fair start. <laughs> Yeah, this 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 will be a full on thousand meters from start to finish, John. This is uh, to get me into the into the final. Yeah, no messing around here. No, no relaxing. This is full on concentration. It's no use leaving your best till the final if you don't leave the make the final. So you've got to give it all here. So we're looking through there. So Ben Nichols, M1. You look across um, to sort of second, third from the outside, that'll be McGibbon from Arawa. From this point, it looks as though he might have a slight edge. But gosh, there's a long way to go in this. Uh, only 250 through it. Gosh, these, those drone views uh, from above, just showing the washes of the boat, all those Vs coming through but we're certainly giving it at the moment Thomas McGibbon from Ottawa over there in lane five probably on uh, two in on his left in the white boat Liam Lace Wanganui I like the way these uh, Wanganui athletes just beautiful boat run Liam had beautiful boat run and showing in his heat he must have just only missed out make it through here to this uh, semi. All over, over the very side, Sammy Firkins from Poverty Bay also going very well on the red boat. I think we've got our first three. Yep. So through the 500 they go. Um, McGibbon. Off.
Yeah, he, he uh, I don't think he took it out right at the very start. Liam was there pushing him all the way. Some more K2s, team boats going out, looking great. Great showing from Hawke's Bay here, John. What's that? Three, four crews. Lanes eight, seven, four, and... Four, oh, and four on the next one. Yeah, four. yeah. They'll have some K4s to put together, I'm sure. Good clean start. Ooh, who's that in lane two? Gosh, she got away with Isla Fraser. Bay of Plenty. Good strong start from her. She, she settles into her work and she's still go, storming out. Well, that was just trouble at the start, but now rectified things and corrected things there smoothly now. Certainly was the best in the starts. Yeah. Green boat. I think Isla and Greer, those are names that we've uh, spoken of <laughs> over the years, isn't it, John? They've come through. When they started off, the cockpit was up to almost up to their armpits. But as they've grown up, look at how strong they've become over the years. And they're still over in, in the under-14 age group. But over the far side in that green boat, yeah. looking very, very strong. Greer Hamilton from Hawke's Bay. Wasn't the fastest out of the start. The fastest most definitely out of the start was on the inside here, lane two, Isla. But uh, Greer... Just like the diesel she is, just ploughed on through. Also, pink boat over the far side, line, lane nine, coming home. That's the other one. Nicole Pinia. So there we've got our top three coming through. Born of North Shore, Iona Lambie, 
Hawke's Bay, Iris Davis of North Shore, Celia Willoughby, Poverty Bay, Mia Parker, uh, Maya Parker of Hawke's Bay, and Annabelle Jex of Karapira. So again, as we saw, said earlier, the four Hawke's Bay crews in the first heat, four in this one, a couple from Poverty Bay, a couple from North Shore as well, and uh, Annabelle Jex from Karapira. Waiting for the start. I've just been called in. It's our last athlete from the previous heat. It was Millie just crossing the line. Well done, Millie. Good effort. These young girls, of course, it's a rainbow of colours, isn't it? All the pinks and the greens. Yeah. And then the bright coloured life vests. I mean, that's a great introduction as these buoyancy vests into racing. Just because, you know, if it means just that little bit of extra confidence for them to get out there and race, so be it. So we've got a great start from uh, in now the second heat of the under 14 women's K1 500. Look like Claudine there in lane one, John. They jumped I away. I think so, yeah, yeah. Claudine Merlot and, and two in from her is uh, Ohio Hall. Again, those outside lanes, though, showing up. And the second from the outside, that's Maya Parker of Hawke's Bay. She looks to have got away uh, extremely well. Well, you cast your experienced eye down there, John, and you can see that some of them have just got that little bit finer technique, haven't they? And for under 14 women, I mean, mm. nobody would expect them to have a, a great deal of strength in their early stages of their kayaking careers. But wow, they've got to please the coaches with mm. their techniques. You're just looking at the front of their boats, which is a telltale sign, you know, and them bouncing up and down. But they're just cutting through the water so smoothly. And none better than they are two leaders yes. at the moment and the white boats on yeah. outside and inside in this race. On the inside, yeah. that's Claudine Merlo, Maya Parker over in lane eight. So both from Hawke's Bay. one another's strengths and weaknesses. Oh, this oh, is impressive, isn't it? Isn't it? Hey. I was just about to say down here, lane one, you go, Claudine. She's going to get bragging rights going into the final. She's coming home here. She hasn't looked up once, you know. She hasn't looked over to her club mate. She just got eyes focused on that finishing line. Well done. Now she looks over. Hey, I won this by a boy length. And yes, in comes her club mate. Maya Parker. And then in uh, third is uh, Poverty Bay's Celia Willoughby. Lane three is next home. That's Kaya Ohio Hall of Hawke's Bay. And in lane two, Riria Ate. Oops, and there's the value of the buoyancy jackets. Although she might not have one on, but yeah, oh yes, yeah, I think they all have, haven't they? Yes. waiting for our uh, IRB to clear the lane as we that was the completion of our second heat yep under 14 so now we've got a final this is the men's K2 under 16 men's event 27 
So we will see these these guys know how to paddle. They've been around for a few years now, so we'll see some water flying out. So lane one, Cartwright, Neeloff from Karapiro. Uh, lane two, Baker and, and Nukutai from Hawke's Bay. Lane three, Hutchison and Burgess from Hawke's Bay. Lane four, Botha and Scott from North Shore. Lane five, Worcester and Tullock from Wanganui. Lane six, Monk and McDonald from Ottawa. Lane seven, Kinsella and Thrupp from Poverty Bay. Lane eight, Ferguson and Lee from Karapiro. And over there on the far side, lane nine, Orman and France. That is... So I've seen under 14s and now we just see that extra couple of years of development with the under 16s. As you say, John, I just, you, when you were bringing up the times before in these conditions. So, just such good data for the coaches and for the athletes themselves. You know, there's no tailwind, there's no headwind. So it's good, honest times. So it's a good reflection of one's training. See how we've gone over the year. So the, of course, being live stream, so this will be watched in Aussie what, as, they're, as they're having their breakfast. Coaches oh. and athletes. Just the peripheral vision over all nine crews. They were just <laughs> great starts. Nobody limped out of the start here. So excellent start from all nine crews. And maybe, just maybe, lane four, both are in Scott from North Shore. I like the look of Monk and McDonald in six as well. I was just looking at the times from their heats. So Mac and there was a uh, Butter and Scott won their heat in 152.59 and second, so 0.4 of a second yeah. behind was Monk and McDonald 153.03 the other heat was quite a bit slower, three seconds slower yeah. with um, Worcester and Tullock so the fastest, the faster heat times came from Butter and Scott the fastest heat times and they're currently in lane four so that's only four hundredths of a second yeah, yeah. between the two of them over 500 yep. metres. Well, yep. that's, that's nothing. That's a sneeze. Oh, is it good to hear the crowd? This is a final, folks. Get down there for your teammates. Looks like Ottawa, lane six. They're not going to let them go. Coming here, lane three. That's Hutchison and Burgess from Hawke's Bay. Oh, it's tough now. It's like paddling through golden syrup, <laughs> paddling through tar. So oh. Monk, Monk and McDonald, Butter and Scott of North Shore in lane four in the yellow. We've seen some pretty impressive finishes. And lane four, will they get up to stop Monk and McDonald? They will not. That is in lane six. It's Monk and McDonald of Arawa, Butter and Scott of North Shore. And I think in between them was it Worcester and Tullock. That was a most impressive. Use that word impressive a lot here, but that was. <laughs> well done. Good effort, lads. So the title goes to Monk and McDonald, the Arawa Club. And uh, the silver to Butter and Scott of North Shore, and the bronze to Wanganui's Worcester and Tullock. So, another final. This is the Open Women's. Now we're going to 
just like those under 16 men, the shower of spray. We'll see a shower <laughs> of spray with these ladies. The Open Women's K2 500 straight final. So there is a lot of pride in these crews. In lane one from Ottawa, Garrett and Joyce. Lane two from North Shore, Cleghorn and Westlake. Uh, lane three, Waitra, Padroot and Padroot. Good, we haven't called those names out all morning, have yeah. we? Good to see them again. Lane four, Wanganui, Hurley and Scott. Lane five, North Shore, Tate and Birmingham. Lane six, North Shore. Demopolis and Woodhouse. And lane seven, Ottawa, McCullum and Campbell. Three North Shore crews in this. Lanes two, five and six. Couple of Ottawa in there. Lanes one and seven. So a good sprinkling of representation from around the country. That's it then, that's the start of this final, the women's K2 500. Lane, Ottawa. lane one, gosh, they flew out of the start. That was Garrett and Joyce from the Ottawa club. I'd love to see that start again. Man, they just rocketed out. And on their, uh, immediately on their right, the North Shore pairing of uh, Cleghorn and Westlake, John, I think they had a very good start too. Yeah, just looking at the replay of that start, most certainly Garrett and Joyce from the Ottawa Club had a brilliant start. So on their inside then, Cleghorn and Westlake of North Shore in the blue. There's not much between... Those two or the whiter combination, uh, the Padroots, they're in lane four and uh, lane three. So lanes one, two and three, and then you just miss out one and go across to uh, lanes five and six, North Shores, Tate and Birmingham, and Demopolis and Woodhouse. That's very tight. So this is the open woman's final, folks. Going to start to hear some screaming soon, John, with this coverage. Look at them. We're just looking at it. One, two, three, four, five. There's five crews in the money here. S still maybe, just maybe on the inside here. But coming through now, Whitra Club. That's uh, Padrut and Padrut. Still Arrow on the inside. They know the challenges are coming. And they're coming thick and fast, but they're holding it together beautifully. This is great finishing from the team on the inside, Ottawa, Garrett and Joyce. And they'll go to the line first, just ahead of lane three. And that is the Whitra uh, Padroots. And in the centre of those, and low-fiving each other, Cleghorn and Westlake taking the bronze. It's the way I saw it. Well done, ladies. So the national title, they really took it. Such a great start, shows the importance of a start, particularly in these shorter lengths, 500 metres. Great start from Garrett and Joyce. I just think they couldn't see the finish coming quick enough because I, the, uh, that pairing, Padroots, the Padroot sisters, no doubt, from Waitra, they were coming at them. Well done, ladies. Measured the race perfectly. You've got a national title in your back pocket going to Ottawa, Canoe Club, Christchurch. So another final here, the under 18s, men K1, back up to the thousand we go. 
event 29 the men's k1 under 18 men's k1 1000 So lane one, Matt McKendry from Poverty Bay, uh, Tiago Chamberlain in lane two from Ottawa, Maya Campbell, Poverty Bay in lane three, Kaya Gilwoodson in lane four, Dylan Monk lane five. He's from the Ottawa club. They've just got a gold medal in the uh, Open Women's K2. Maxwell Kennedy, Poverty Bay in lane six, Bryden Story from North Shore in lane seven. Liam Rogers in lane 8 and that great athlete Ollie Egan from Poverty Bay over there in lane 9 I think we'll look around the middle lanes 4 and 5 Kaya Gilbertson he, he came down and just basically walked across the finish line didn't he <laughs> yeah that's right just yeah what you doing yeah heats we don't mind that but he won't be doing that in this race for the final under 18 men's k1 1000 got my secretary here writing down the times in the heats 352 Dylan did in the uh, in his heat and pretty quick times for under 18 men's Kaya just pipped him by a second 351 so there's only a second in it and uh, this is going to be a slog yeah you've got no assistance whatsoever not a, so much as a puff of wind Well, she's a good t good times 351 for un under 18 and that was a heat I certainly look at these guys now going sub 45 345 if not quicker Good clean start, everybody. Big shower of spray from all nine lanes. Very early to say here yet, John, who's <laughs> I can't pick it from anybody. No. And we're probably a good 200 metres into the race. Well, we know the ones to watch out for, really, and they're in lanes four, five, and six, if we go by what they produced in the heat sets, Gilbertson in four, Monk in five, and Maxwell Kennedy in six, but those were heats, and others were maybe just competing within themselves a little bit to ensure they qualified. So this is a totally new game, this one. But if we look down there now, we see... Lane two, that's Tiago Chamberlain. Yeah. Uh, two and from him. And lane four, that's Gilbertson and Monk. They're both there. And we'll get a better idea as they slip through the 500. It's uh, lane two. Tiago Chamberlain from Ottawa Club. He is having the race of his life. Going very strongly coming up to the 500. But I think if he looks across to his right now, yeah. he'll know that there's plenty happening outside. Through the 500 they go. It may well be Chamberlain who... I just think lane four, Kaya Gilbertson now, he's just a nice, low-piece stroke here. 
Lane two, though, he's not going away. Tiago Chamberlain, he is not going away. As a lift and tempo, you're quite right, Gilbertson. And just over to his right. Oh, the black boat. Yeah, the Dylan Monk. <laughs> Coming with two, 200 to go. And that'll also be the challenge from Kennedy from Poverty Bay in lane six. Not featuring yet, but Chamberlain, I think, might have slipped back into third place as they head towards 100 to go. And this is going to be one heck of a finish between Gilbertson and Monk. Gilbertson is on the inside wearing the orange cap in lane four in the black alongside of him. But Gilbertson has got this. He's really going for it. Gilbertson half a length over Monk. And Gilbertson most impressive in this 18 and under men's K1-1000. And he takes it by, well, he's still moving away. Goes to the line, gets the hooter. Monk is second. And Chamberlain here in lane two will take the bronze medal just ahead of Kennedy of Poverty Bay. And then we see uh, Rogers and Campbell. That was a big race, 1,000 metres. Great start from Chamberlain. The rest stayed slightly with him. He might have even managed to burn off one or two of those big challenges. Uh, but then Gilbertson and Monk took over with about 150 to go. Good battle there, the men's 18 and under K1-1000. Yeah, just great racing that I was. <laughs> There's, uh, I mean, we had a great start out from uh, Tiago Chamberlain. He, had, I think, he had the best start, but just didn't didn't phase our our uh, eventual first place getter, Kaya Gilbertson. He just not that he made a big kick and a big jump. He just slowly ate away at that lead. Probably by the 500, he was still in second sp spot. Just eight away, slowly came through, applying a little bit more pressure on each blade. Uh, brilliant racing. Congratulations, North Shore. Another gold medal. Congratulations to Kaya. Dylan up for second. These guys know one another inside, outside, upside down. They know one another's racing. <laughs> yeah. Set themselves little challenges. They do, yeah. They talk about it for years to come. And the national title, though, these are your national titles. So another straight final, John, is it? Event 31. Yeah, down at the 500, the women's 16 and under K4. Five starters. <laughs> yeah, so there's a one in front of the dais, obviously. I, I'll pick, as an educated guest, John, is the one with the first, second and third placings. Yes. Okay. There we go. I, I, I think our athletes can uh, work that one out. Yeah, yeah. So another uh, straight final here. This is the under 16. This is too close to call when you look at the... Um, the athletes that are powering these uh, K4s down the course.
as to be expected the um, Hawks Bay with all the so many athletes in the uh, K1 that they've uh, managed to put two K4s together thousand aren't we the open oh. can't you see them no i can't <laughs> can't see can't see oh i thought we were doing what have we got there for 31 we might have a bit of a juggle around here we're down at the thousand meters oh so it's a masters the masters final is it no i've got a 11 too tough for me. Masters 45 to 54. I don't think I've got the sheet here, have we? Oh, yes, here we go. I knew. Here we go. You We've need a decent it. secretary. We found it. <laughs> it was right down the bottom. Okay. At, at the thousand, sorry, we're one race ahead of ourselves, folks. Now, apologies for that. Well, my apologies. Uh, in lane, Masters men, 45 to 54, K1 1000. This is the uh, final. So, good start, just as we're coming up to the 500, just quickly through them. In lane one from Ottawa, that's Neil Gard. Lane two, Whitra, Paul Randall. Lane three, Mike Walker, Bay of Plenty. Uh, lane four, Jorn Scherzer from Mana. Lane five, Garth Spencer from North Shore. Lane six, Matt Flannery from Coupe in lane six. Andy Logue, lane seven, North Shore. Vaughan Reed in lane eight and over the far side. Uh, Ryan uh, from Hawke's Bay, McBritchery in lane nine. So, sorry about that, folks. We're just... Papers, papers, and <laughs> all over the place. We got there in the end. So just look, sorry, mate. I was just looking at those times from that last race. You know, we looked at how how quick they'd been in the heats with the three fifty one by Gilbertson. So we went five seconds faster in the final at three forty six. Uh, Monk three forty eight again, four or five seconds faster than they went. So that's working out really well, isn't it? it Getting is. through your heats. Yep fast enough to qualify and qualify you know fastest as um, as as he did but then ramp it up in the final so coming through the 500 here it looks like out there lane five is it john i think yeah, uh, yeah garth, garth yeah he's looking good yeah i think a couple over from him in lane seven andy logue uh, looks reasonably well positioned but there's quite a lineup out there behind the leader at the moment. Uh, Garth Spencer doing it well in lane five. And two out from him on the right and three out from him, Vaughan Reed and Ryan McBrearty. I oh, know that's um, Vaughan Reed and Andy Logue, sorry. Just miss out that um, McBrearty way back in lane nine on the far side. Now, this is ending up being quite a interesting finish as well. Garth has done a lot of work through that first 750 metres. He's got the medal to hang on here. It looks OK at the moment. Where's that main challenge is out on the far side? That's uh, Vaughan Reed of North Shore yeah. in the blue and white. I think Garth's got everybody's measure here. Yep. He's just yep. uh, hit that glassy water, stroke after stroke. But <laughs> it's going to be a race for the minor placings here, John. Yeah. Big kick here coming from lane three. That's Mike Walker. And Andy, Andy Logue might get up for second here, yeah. the way he's going. Lanes. More maybe Reed got there. Logue finished fast against his teammate. And they'll take second and third. But the winner, without doubt, came out of lane five, Garth Spencer. Look at these masters, man. <laughs> they just sit there. They've done it all. Yeah, they've they? done it all yeah, now. Yeah. We just sit here 
can the can the jetty come to us please <laughs> come on lads you're gonna have to pedal to the jetty well done and just over the far side also is that lane seven lane nights lane, lane nine, nine yeah coming yep, home yep uh, i threw the sheet away at the time. Uh, that's right now we can back to well ryan McGrath. our k4s sorry ladies Had a, a, a wee uh, dress rehearsal, the Masters men, 45. So, yes, now we've got a straight final, the under-16 women's K4 500, event 31. Could have always always gone by that numerical order, couldn't we, John? <laughs> We're jumping from event 29 up to 31 before. Yeah. Anywho, here we go. As the sun comes out. Very pleasant racing conditions. So two Hawks Bay crews in five and seven. Mana closest to us in lane three. Poverty Brave Crew, Roland, Newman, Kennedy and uh, Hamblin. They're very well drilled athletes. They're all in the starter's hand. Great clean start here. And give it to second in, Ottawa, lane six. Pania, Dickerson, Guard and Crossan. Great start from those four young ladies. Excellent start. In the darker colours of the Ottawa Club. Now coming home. Now getting into their work. Second over. Poverty Bay as to be expected. Beautiful racing conditions. Sandwiched in between them with the uh, orange vests. That's Hawks Bay, Parker, Hamilton, Merlo, and Ohio Hall. And taking, taking it home, Ottawa, all the way coming into the 200 boy line. You could freeze them. John, you'd probably find all those paddles, all the shafts parallel to one another. But here we come, two in from us, Poverty Bay. They're chasing down. They are. Our... They are chasing them down. Look at and look how disciplined they are. Not a peep from any of them. Just focusing on the head in front of you, looking at oh, your paddling. Wow, what a great finish this is. Absolute stunner coming in from Poverty Bay. Can they get up? They were trailing for so much against Arawa. Arawa holding them, Arawa holding them. Oh, I think Poverty Bay might just have snuck in. We're going to need the photo for that. That was a classy finish from those two crews. Arawa in control for much of it. But Poverty Bay's strike at the end and timed, was it to perfection or not? Certainly, to the naked eye, it looked as though the Poverty Bay crew of Roland, Newman, Kennedy and Hamblin did get up to pip the, uh, uh, the Arawa crew, Panea, Dixon, Guard and Crossan. What a finish. Absolute stunner. Right. Let's get back to uh, all this racing coming from the under 14, the under 14 men's in particular. We've got uh, three semis coming up here. Bang, 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 one after the other. So our first semi-final, we've got uh, North Shore, lane one, Waitara in lane two, Poverty Bay in lane three, Karapiro in lane four, North Shore lane five, North Shore lane six, North Shore lane seven, 
Uh, in lane eight, we've got Hawks Bay. And in lane nine, we have Waitra. Well, good stuff under 14. Could always be at home doing a maths assignment or some sort of no. science or English. No. Nah. <laughs> we'll be out here paddling. I don't think students get homework these days, do they, John? Not like you and I. <laughs> You didn't do your homework. I did. I was, I was studious. <laughs> didn't help me at all. Did you ever say to your teachers, what do you want to be, John Macbeth, when you grow up? <laughs> I want to I be a commentator. <laughs> no, I, funnily enough, I, I, I always wanted to work in the bank. <laughs> no, not always did I want to work in the bank. I couldn't think of any, anywhere else it would take me. Just for a minute. Yeah, yeah. And then I was offered a job and turned it down. Oh. So, because they, they said you're going to have to move from home, you're going to have to shift. And I said, I'm not moving from home yet. So anyway, luck turns up in some people's lives, eh? Yeah. So we're away here. This is oh, yeah. uh, um, Jade and Gal on the inside of Wheatley, and then Kinsella in lane three, and but then we come out to Ferguson, Braden Ferguson, and uh, Leskovs who looked pretty impressive so too did Ermans earlier today so lane so we got one two three lane four that's Ferguson and lane six it's Leoskowski certainly Ferguson looking smooth eh, through the first stages through the first half of this race Oh, I just the conditions couldn't be better, eh? That's no, just perfect. They're, they're absolutely perfect. So these guys here racing for a place in the final, no doubt. Semi final one. And I think as we've come through the two hundred, a few of these young men would say, Yeah, I think I've done enough to get through. So that would be lane four, Braden Ferguson. He'd know these waters, no, no doubt. Yep. And is that lane six alongside him, Ormonds? In the yellow, lane six it is. And tucked in between them, I think may well be looking at third place. So we have Ferguson, Ormonds and Leoskowski. So you're just looking at the nose of that boat, lane four. That is just running so beautifully, just cutting through the water, no bounce. Yeah, they're, in fact, they're all looking pretty yeah, good in that they regard, do, aren't yeah. they, when you go right back through the field? Just down here on the inside, Gus Kinsella of Poverty Bay. Jaden Gull in lane one from North Shore in the orange topped boat and in lane two that's Thomas Wheatley of Waitra. That's the semi-final so we'll get the fields for that final which is um, on later today 14 and under men's 500 K1. So moving into as they're lining up our second semi of this under 14 men's K1 500. So closest to us, Waitra, that's young Connor Sleep. Um, lane two, Poverty Bay. Lane three, Karapiro. Lane four, Hawks Bay. Lane five, Hawks Bay. Lane six, North Shore. Seven, North Shore. Eight, North Shore. Nine, North Shore.
so they're all in the starters hands here four North Shore athletes six seven eight and nine over the far side Just going back to that uh, 16 and under women's K4 500, um, it was a win to Poverty Bay by three one hundredths of a second over Arawa. That was a really close Ooh. finish. So Poverty Bay take the gold medal there. Hawks Bay third. Well done, ladies. Yes, it's got to be the closest race of the day. Three hundredths of a second. Gosh, we'll have to get the timers coming down to the thousandths of a second before long. <laughs> Formula One racing style. So great start here, all from these young guys, Mana Wainonu from Poverty Bay. Yeah, he's got out pretty well. That's uh, next to him is Robbers from Karapiro. That Egan Cooper looking quite well too. So lanes two and five. That cool. is McBriarty, yeah. and outside of him is uh, Mike Sun of North Shore. we we'll just give it to lane five at the moment. Cole McBrecci from Hawke's Bay. Just on his right, maybe, one of the North Shore paddlers, Mike Sun from lane six. I will say, John, this crowd hasn't lost its voice at any stage even through the heat so <laughs> it's good to hear folks cheering on Boy. the athletes and you can hear them out there on the water no problem oh just got a swimmer have we no. and it, it's so it's yeah. so encouraging for the paddlers themselves mm. they can hear that noise that's a Finish from Cooper Egan in lane four is good. Head down, wobbling all over the place a wee bit, but certainly rotating those arms quickly. It might even it might even earn him the second place in this, the yes. way he's going. No doubt about it, though. McBretty from Hawke's Bay has it. Well, he's generating <laughs> so much momentum here. Look at this in lane four, Cooper yeah. Egan. Will he get up for second? He, I think he will. He, or, or, I don't know. <laughs> So that was lane six, I think, uh, Mike Sun out there. Might have got up for second, but very close between he and McBrady. So that's the first of the or second semi-final. And we get to the third semi-final in a moment. They're all lined up, ready to go on time. And it's uh, Bay of Plenty, Waitara, Arawa, two Arawa teams, and uh, Canoists in lanes three and four. Eastern Bay in lane five through Roland. In North Shore's Almaga, Troy Wooster of Bay of Plenty, Harry Tasker, Hawke's Bay, and Max Britt Beck of Waitara. So we remember the heats here, John, where we saw Noah Almaga just come through with that storm yeah, at the finish. Right. So maybe he Dad, who would probably no doubt be coach, just said, maybe we want to pick up our kick one stroke <laughs> to make it through. So that was the heats. These are the semis. So it's a lot of racing for these young, young men and young women in the under 14s. And some great competition. It's going to be just a challenge to make it through to the final. That's going to be a, an amazing feat. We can ring home and tell our parents if they're not even if they're not here.
We did have somebody go and get us a coffee, didn't we, John? I don't know. I think they've forgotten yeah, us. Yeah, so much for that. Yeah, yeah. Wonder what that would taste like. <laughs> I'll, I'll just, I'll just wander down and see. <laughs> it's nearly lunchtime, mate. Yeah, it is. Wayne of Bay of Plenty, Ty Cations Velvin of Whitera, Daniel Panea in lane three, who gets away reasonably well too, but I think to his right that's uh, Igor Semenov who looked impressive earlier today in lane four from Arawa. He might have had the best of the starts with Dom Rowland in lane five. So let's see what happens out of this. Lanes four and five look to have got away the best. Yes, one lanes one three. Four and five, John, I think you're correct there. Brilliant starts. Roman Wayne, Bay of Plenty, he's on the inside in lane one. Lane one just dropping back a yes. bit now, but four and five, toe to toe. Semenov and Roland, Arawa and Eastern Bay of Plenty. Or Eastern Bay as they are, of course. So... Well, that's a, that's a big lead that's been established already. Not quite at the halfway. Men's K1, this is the third of the three semi-finals. And, gee, Don Rowland and... Yeah, a little bit of shadow boxing going yeah, on there, yeah, I think. I think so. Lane, uh, lane four... That was Igor. He just went, whoa, well, I've done enough here. And then lane five saw that. He went one stroke more and dropped down. Uh, now he's now he's putting the hammer down, hasn't he, John? Yeah. He's just going to stamp his authority on this race. He's looking very good indeed. Semenov looked to be just sort of coasting through, but I think he's now... Decided. Those are the things that go through your mind to it. I don't want to give him too much of yeah. an advantage mentally yeah. going into the, yeah. the final. I don't mind if he burns himself out here, but yeah. when he looks around, I want him to see me looking fresh. Yeah. So no doubt about this one, it's Dom Rowland takes the third semi-final. Igor Semenov. Congratulations, and Dom. Great racing, Igor, with him, with him what, to the two, just after the 250? Yeah. There's Elmiger, Noah Elmiger in lane six. Down here in lane one, Roman Wayne, as we saw, had a very good start, was right up with those in the centre of the field for a long time. Good finish from Daniel Panier. Oh, he's a close finish. Yeah, <laughs> and Troy Wooster, and Panier just might have uh, pipped pip yeah. Wooster. So that's our third semi-final. We're looking forward to a, an outstanding final later today. And we've got a final right now, the Open and 23 Under Men's K1 1000. So we just looked at the times before, didn't we, John, for the uh, under-18 men's, and they certainly stepped it up yeah. from their heats to the final. Well, it's a good six or seven seconds to a didn't yeah, quite yeah. break the 45. But so uh, let's see if we can see with these open men something under 140, which will please the selectors. This is for a national title. This one's very dear to my heart. The K1 1000. Did you compete in one or two, did you? I did, many moons ago. So we have lane one. Liam Lace, Wanganui, James Munro, Otago, Max Brown, Wanganui. 
he might have had this title before. Quade Thompson, Poverty Bay, he might have had this title before. Kalani Gilbertson, North Shore, Lane 5. Grant Clancy, Lane 6 from North Shore. Zach Ferkins, Poverty Bay, Lane 7. Thomas McGibbon from Ottawa in Lane 8. And Jean Prato from North Shore in Lane 9. It's a good sprinkling of North Shore. So we go from Otago right across to uh, Wanganui, right across to Poverty Bay, all the way, you know, North Shore, passing through Christchurch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've got from all around the country here. And a good, clean start, first up for this open and 23 and under men's K1 1000. Be nice to know where we can pick it out who the uh, under 23, Kalani Gilbertson, right next door to, say, Quite Thompson. He'll be racing open. Max Brown would be out racing open. So. Um, Kalani finds himself in some pretty stern company. Yes. I was just looking through some of those times from the heats and the fastest was um, Kalani and Max Brown wasn't far behind him. I also took a note of James Monroe just to see what sort of form he's in at the moment. He was quite a way back. He starts in lane two. It's a bit hard to spot any advance on that field at the moment. Perhaps it's Quade Thompson might have just picked up a wee bit there in lane four. And uh, outside of him in lane five, Gilbertson, they'll be watching each other closely. So I'll give it to Quade. He's had a great start. And he's probably now just taken it over to a boat length coming into the 500. watch some of these guys John you just you just f focus on one athlete and all of a sudden bang up goes that tempo a little bit more and you'll certainly see that from Quade because he knows he, he's got <laughs> he's got some amazing athletes around him that could uh, come through and spoil the party oh well Max Brown in yeah. lane three you expect him to be there at the yeah. finish um, he's looking at Thompson from the inside on the, he's on Thompson's left on Thompson's right there's Gilbertson Grant Clancy is up there too looking menacing a fair bit of this race still to go but no doubt about it Quade Thompson yeah, Quade Thompson lane 4 looking very strong every stroke just bringing him that closer to home might as well get this over and done with. We're going to see a big pickup. Everybody, if they're not there, you certainly don't. You want to go from a, a fourth up to a third, and that's very close. That's very doable for a few of these athletes sitting around there. And then I'm looking at lane three here. That's Max Brown. He's probably just sitting in fourth now. So he probably wants to get up and overtake Kalani Gilbertson in lane five. That's Grant Clancy in lane yeah. six too, looking good. So he'll, he'll be in second place at the moment. But Thompson looks to be uncatchable. However, we've well, seen plenty happen in the final 50 metres of a race like this. Thompson has it. Clancy is second. Splitting them is Gilbertson. And the red, he's coming through strongly, but Thompson has got enough in the tank. This is a big effort from Grant Clancy. Look, at lane five climbing up and over lane six. That's Kalani Gilbertson giving Grant Clancy a run for his money. Willie, we've seen some naked. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, he nearly got there. But congratulations, Quade Thompson. Excellent racing. Really had that from start to finish and he had it all covered. Coming home now. I think it meant a bit to him too. He punched the yeah. air as he went over that line and just put it, putting it out there saying, I'm still around, I'm still around and I'm good. 
And I'm the national title holder again, Tom Quade Thompson, wins the open and 23 and under K1 1000 from Grant Clancy of North Shore and Kalani Gilbertson of North Shore. Right, we've got one more race, then it's lunch time. So we've got uh, another final, which is always good. This is the under 18 women's K4 500. So gosh, we've been up to the 1,000, back to the 500 again. So North Shore in lane three, that's the inside. Wanganui, Arawa, Waitara. 18 and under. I've seen a few of these already today in other events, so they're warmed up and ready. Each one of these clubs looking to add this to their title hall. So Ottawa here, I think, wouldn't they be looking at a clean sweep? They've just taken out the open. They want their under 18s to uh, to take this out. Proud, well, they're all very proud clubs, but gosh, it's Ottawa Club. The numbers seem to have just dropped down a bit, but you know, they're still getting some very, very good athletes coming through. So much competition, isn't there, out there yeah. for a young person's interest? You know, how do you attract people to a sport, keep them there? As we wait, this start straight after this will be the um, prize giving. So if your club or individual from your club has uh, won a prize, won an event, first, second, third, then managers need to be rustling them up ready to go. So the prize giving straight after this race, lunch break. We're back at, um, it's coming up to midday, so we're back just after one o'clock for the first race of the second session. Just to add to that too, John, if I may, don't forget, folks, please have your uh, club colours on, your club bibs when you come up for your uh, your medals. Great start here out here from the North Shore Club, lane three. Brilliant start from them. However, two over. Lane five, Ottawa Club. Here we come. And sandwiched <laughs> between them is the Wanganui. So this is, it's very tight. No crews have really dropped off yet. So I just would say probably Ottawa, maybe now. Our open woman did it. We're going to do it too. Very strong depth over all the age groups. North Shore, they had a brilliant start. They just dropped back now, but coming up, Wonga Nui in the blue and white bibs. It's going to be close for third. Close for third, but still giving it Ottawa, gosh, I think that's just sheer pride now in that. Because I just think technically from this is uh, Wanganui, they look so good. But coming home now, less than 200 to go. Beautiful kick, beautiful kick from Ottawa. North Shore also giving it a go. But coming home, here we go. 30 metres to go. We're going to have Christchurch taking out the open women's and also this under 18. Congratulations to them. Excellent result. Very uh, impressive. Yeah, and that was, you know, a quarter of a boat length. They did it well, got away well, and they dominated. They set the pace. And they knew that that attack was coming, and it certainly was a good attack from Wanganui. But Aroa win it. Wanganui in second place and North Shore and Waitara. So that wraps up this morning's session, the first session of our 
NZCT 2024 New Zealand Canoe Sprint Championships. Uh, we do have a lunch break now until 10 past 1, the first...
the second session of this day one. It's a 14 and under mixed K4s. And there are two heats. We've got two from North Shore in this particular heat. They're both on the inside in lanes two and three. In lane four, it's Poverty Bay. In five, East Side Paddlers. And in lane six, and storming away with this at the moment, is the Poverty Bay Club with uh, Kinsella, Willoughby, Atta and Wainohu. And they look very impressive, don't they, over this first of our sec uh, first of our two heats in the 14 and under mixed K4s. Going through another full program this afternoon with some finals. The finals include the 16 and under um, fours, a 5 over 500 and a 16 under women's, so men's and women's. Uh, men's K4 and the women's K2. It's the first of our finals as we watch an outstanding performance here, one which sees Poverty Bay streak away with this particular race. Kinsella, Willoughby, Atta and Wainuhu. And in second place will be the second of the Poverty Bay combinations. It's Egan, uh, another of the Willoughbys, Keeper and Zemp. And in lane five, it's east side with Sands, Van Ahmed, Moss and Hamlet. Now, a good way to start the post-lunch session with Poverty Bay taking out that first of two heats. Good group of young volunteers down there doing the holding before the start down on the 500 meter start down on the pontoon. Taking a trip down on the water and getting set up, knowing that in these good conditions they won't get too wet, but you know what it can be like in that situation, getting extremely wet and miserable. But it's all good at the moment as we look at heat two, which is North Shore, the Elmigas, Leoskovsky and Sun Arawa, two of the Panea family uh, with robbers and jacks. Then from Waitara, Randall, Miners, Sleep and Wheatley. Hawke's Bay will be in lane five with Jones, L L Lambie, Egan and McBrady. And North Shore with Vaughan, Umans, Hills and Hawke. Heat two. Lane 4, Whitera, just a little bit slow on their release from the pontoon, but the others away quite well. In fact, a very even start, although we see uh, the North Shore Club in Lane 2 just take a bit of a wander over to the left-hand side before they rectify things. Need to get back into sync. They're taking a wee while to do that, but not losing too much ground. Now they're into it. But inside of them is uh, Ottawa. They start really well. Also... Uh, Waitara have regained their composure after losing ground at the start, now just drifting a wee bit. So it's going to take some work for them to really get into it. 14 and under, remember, so a lot of these very, very new to the sport and particularly new to getting involved in a team such as a, as a four. Out on the far side, North Shore and Hawke's Bay inside them. Great race, isn't it, John? Just wandering down the course, as you say, a little bit of unstructured. <laughs> right out uh, the back. You ran up the stairs. I did run up the stairs. Just seeing uh, trouble. These are things we don't. Uh, old acquaintances. I better go. I better go. I better go. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is nice from the outside lane, North Shore. That's Vaughan, Umans, Hills, and Hawk. They have the advantage, but will certainly sense that Hawke's Bay are closing in on them. 
If Hawke's Bay can keep their momentum and keep their rhythm nice and smooth, they might get a chance to challenge here, but also coming through in the blue, that is the second of the North Shore clubs. Oh, and coming up on the inside of them too is Ottawa. Yep. Oh, uh, just a lot of correcting strokes here. It's a hard thing to do, is it? Yeah, and the yeah. Nice, oh, this nice big push coming in. Oh, we're just going to finish towards the edge of our lane. Oh. So six, five, and two. That's the way they finish. Six being North Shore, five being Hawke's Bay, and two being the second of the North Shore Club. So that's the second of our two heats in the 14 and under mixed K4s. Who are we just waiting here for lane four? Is it all just a little bit of a wobbles on? Yeah, they had trouble right at the start and looked to have corrected themselves nicely, but this is an opportunity, though, for them to get into sync, isn't it? Yeah. Even though the race is over, this is a good wee practice for them. I mean, it's a horrible feeling. You might have a couple of the guys in the boat, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling good, and, and you can just see others in the back. That's why team boat is so important, because if you get used to your K1s, um, you, you might have a bias to the left or to the right, and so the, the moment you hop in to another boat, you just feel completely foreign. Yes. So team boat paddling is, is an important, it's almost a, a great exercise in itself to be able to do that. Right, rolling along. So I might apologise before John, running up those stairs. No, no. I've caught my breath I, I, now. I was quite chuffed. <laughs> I was quite surprised. I could hear the thunder coming up the stairs and I thought, I wondered if that was you. <laughs> Light foot. Anyway, open and, and under 23 women's K1 500, so two heats of those. Yep. Just racing through them. Yeah. It's good to see these names. Anyway, so nobody in lane one. We've got um, Jessica Cleghorn, Eastern Bay, uh, Christy Tate from North Shore. She's in lane three. Natasha McGibbon from Ottawa in lane four. No athlete in lane five. So it's kind of like three and three. Mm. So and the other three athletes starting from lane six is Madison Garrett from the Ottawa Club, Rebecca Scott from Bay of Plenty, and Brianna Truern from Mana. So two, three, and four, six, seven, and eight. And there's two heats of the open and 23 and under. So good start here for the uh, first heat of the Open and 23 and Unders. There's six athletes in this. Just kind of like 
It says there's seven. They must have yeah. put another one in, John. I Looks don't know like who it. that'll be. And that is obviously in lane five. We don't have an athlete on our programme for lane five, but welcome anyway, whoever that is. So good clean start from everybody. Just looks like over there in lane seven, Rebecca Scott just slipping back a little bit here. But certainly a great start from lane two. That's Jessica Cleghorn. Would expect that from her from the Eastern Bay Club in the yellow boat. Madison Garrett, two and six, looking quite strong. So yeah, that's not, not too much in it, although, as you mentioned, one of those, uh, Rebecca Scott, has drifted back a wee bit from the start. But the rest are all um, in this at the moment. Even in lane two, that's uh, Jessica Cleghorn of Eastern Bay, who came out well, but is in the yellow. She's uh, within range. So paddling with uh, Jessica is uh, Christy in lane three. So there's four of them now. Maybe now, just looking through, Jessica just could be slipping back a bit. Great start from her. She was certainly first out in the first uh, 100 metres or so by a good half a boat length coming through now. Look at that, Natasha McGibbon from the uh, Ottawa Club. Beautiful kick, beautiful racing strategy by her going through, just on her right, and that's the athlete from North Shore who lane five, we haven't got that on our program, sorry folks. But certainly lane four for the first heat, that's Natasha McGibbon, she's gonna take this out, and the athlete from lane five, North Shore, couldn't quite work it, that is. And the other North Shore athlete, coming through from lane three. Well done to her, that was Natasha. Still good conditions out there at racing. We've got starting pontoon. That'll keep, got one false start. I hope we haven't put the hex on things. No, no. One false no. start in that early morning now we've got the pontoon out. Let's see how we go. So well done, ladies. That was our first heat. The second heat, uh, no athlete in lane one. Um, we've got North Shore lane two, Ottawa in lane three, uh, Whitra, Julia Padru. Good to see her back uh, in lane four. Uh, Emma Kemp lane five, Isla Westlake lane six from North Shore, and then two Ottawa athletes in lane seven and eight and they are Leah McCullum and Lucy Campbell. Lucy being in lane eight. So in lane five, oh Similuru. Clifton. Clifton. Yeah, yeah, she was in lane five. So that's who was it? Yeah, who got so up she for finished second, second, I think. Yeah. yeah second. Behind Na for... Natasha. Clean start for this final heat, heat two of the open and under 23 women's K1 500. Gosh, you're getting, <laughs> I didn't line up against these girls. Gosh, you're getting out of the block, the block so quick. Were they? Yeah. In lane two, North yeah. Shore. Yeah, Demopolis. She's, she really has been on the target throughout the morning sessions and now looks to be in a very handy position there. So Demopolis of North Shore, Julia Padrut is two inside her, looks good. 
And you sort of think those two have um, got it at the moment, although there's plenty of activity ha happening out on the right of Padrut from Emma Kemp and Isla Westlake as examples. I expect Emma to make a move probably about now or she actually great thousand exponent. Which you'll just hear, <laughs> I think if we're looking at this angle, she's just starting to come through now. We might put our uh, drone up in the air at the moment, but here comes Emma, I think. Just, she's certainly going to be the first two cutting that uh, 200 buoy line. On her left in the red boat, I think John would Julia. be, yeah, Julia Padru from White Chuck. Coming down to the 100 mark, and it is still Padrut, but Camp is digging it in on her right. So that vibrant pink boat of Julia Padrut has the lead. Emma Kemp on her right. So it's lanes four and five. Still in this is Erin um, Demopoulos in lane two. She's looking set for third here. This is the second of the heats. And that's the way good. That's a nice smooth finish too from yeah. Padrut holding out Kemp. And Kemp safely through and so to Demopolis. And in lane six, that was the next uh, canoeist across the line, Isla Westlake. She's from North Shore too. Yep. So this is um, Lucy from the Ottawa Club. Good on you getting out there or giving it a go. Congratulations to you, Lucy. Right, another final coming up, John. The under 16 men's K4 500. We've got five crews in this. Closest to us in lane three will be the North Shore. Watch out for them. So, who we got in there? All these boys have raced before Ormond, Dooney, France, and Scott. And then the Ottawa Club, Panea, Monk, Simonoff, and McDonald. Hawks Bay, Karapiro, Poverty Bay, uh, Poverty Bay, Kinsella, Roland, Thrupp and Kinsella. It's another yeah. strong group. Yep. So watch out for lane seven. They'll fly out the blocks. So I uh, wouldn't know who to put your house on, would you? Not me, that's for sure. Well, it would be nice if the conditions stay like this over the next couple of days. I know there's quite a bit of rain forecast for yeah. tomorrow, but um, there's no, no indication there's going to be big winds or, or winds that affect things. But we'll find out when we get here in the morning. We might have a thunderstorms are in the forecast. Hope that doesn't have been sure. We don't want to compete over thunder, do we, John? There'd be no contest. The yeah. thunder would be second. Good to know that the quality of the coffees hasn't changed in a year. That's good. Up at, up at the podium, and then there's the... Um, other little places uh, along by the toilets there which are pumping them out. Mm. So you said uh, National Selectors, Chair of Selectors is here? Yes, right. Steve, I've seen the both selectors here. Oh, okay. Yeah, Steve Richards is here. We'll see if we can grab him later on just to have an explanation of a few, <laughs> few things that yeah. one has one scratching his one head. <laughs> but they just for a change. Yeah, yeah, just for a change. Yeah. So North Shore in three. This is a 16 and under men's K4 500. It's a straight final. And North Shore have got away well in lane three. Arawa, as you'd expect, not letting any lead slip away from them. Next to them, Hawke's Bay, Carapiro, and Poverty Bay might be just back a wee bit. As we see the three in the centre start to take over. In particular, it looks like Hawke's Bay, Baker, Ooh. Nukatai, Hutchison, Burgess. Hawke's Bay just did a scream to the right like they 
jam the rudder to the right, they've just gone right over to the right hand side of their lane. Whether the stroke, of course the stroke, he's the one on the front, he's the one that steers the boat. Whether he saw a big clump of weed or, or something, but he just moved that boat right over to the right. Coming up into the 200 now, didn't seem to affect them No, at all. no, I was going to say it, 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 it might have deviated, but yeah. They didn't, uh, it didn't upset their rhythm and it looks really smooth. Well, gee, you know, it's great to watch this. This is a classy exhibition. When you look back through some of the other crews, the um, synchronization's not quite there, but Hawks Bay have not dropped at all. They are on form. And, yeah, we'll add insult to injury. They're just going to stretch their lead out now a bit. Oh, gosh. No slackening off, even no. though the finish line is only 20 metres in front. They are going right through the line. No slackening. Hit the line now, and now they ease up, and Hawke's Bay dominant in this race. That's Baker, Nukatai, Hutchison, Hutchinson, and Burgess, and they take out the final of the 16 and under men's K4 500. Wow. Yeah. And oh, uh, third, lane seven, Poverty Bay. Yeah. Well done, lads. Excellent race. A few more medals in the back pocket to keep those. So that was event 41. Done and dusted. Straight final. So rolling into event 42. This is a, another final. This is the under 16 women's K2 500. And so all nine lanes great sight as they're coming into the blocks. So we've got uh, North Shore, Bourne and Owens. We've got two pens here, everyone, and <laughs> John McDonald keeps the two of them all the time. <laughs> yeah. So we've got Garden Dickerson in lane two from Ottawa, Pernier and Nicole, and Roland, Nicole Pernier from yep. Eastern Bay. Um, I'd like to see these names. Um, Anderson and Toy from Wanganu in lane four, and sister Helena Pania and Crossan from Ottawa um, in five. Look, got one sister racing for Ottawa and the other racing mm. for Eastern Block. Well, there's a big grudge match going on here. Uh, lane six, Poverty Bay, Newman and Kennedy. Lane seven, Hawks Bay, Stovall and Hodgkinson. Lane eight, Willoughby and Hamblin from Poverty Bay and in lane nine, Harrison and Bates from Hawks Bay. Yeah, I just had a close look at that Hawks Bay team which has just won the previous race and they came through that finish line and they came around to, you know, the return area and they were just so still so focused, you know, that looks like a professional young unit there. What I like about the live streaming that we've got going out at the moment, you can see right across the pontoon and see what the volunteers do, how they lie down and just finger touch the stern of the boat and make sure they're not influencing it, but have to listen to orders too, don't they, from the starter. All just volunteers and all young people out there doing this job and they'll be happy to see this start get away well. So we just quickly on there before we come into the 500, they normally the, they have just headsets on. So you won't hear, say, boat going back to or lane seven up. You just feel your boat's just moving very, very slightly, which is a good thing because it takes away that angst of this guy's ahead of me, this guy, this crew's ahead of me or behind me or what, or what have you. 
Anywho, further on to the racing, yeah, it well, looks like lane four would have been yeah, well, 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 yeah, indeed. Um, per, the the Arawa combination had the best of the starts, and they're in second place at the moment. And the the red boat out in the centre, but certainly leading the way, Wanganui with um, Anderson and Toy, who've been up front a fair bit this morning or today already, and they've got a good boat length advantage. Good combination, Wanganui always always producing good, particularly women, uh, young women are exceptional at the nationals. Mm. And this is a, a very, a mighty effort here on the on Karapero. A challenge coming a couple out from them though, so that's uh, Newman and Kennedy of Poverty Bay in lane six. But a long way adrift of this Wanganui pair, they look really good. This is the K2 500 final and this is going to be a title for Wanganui in lane four. Gosh, they look very good. The coaches will be happy with that. Just lane six, just getting a little bit raggedy towards the end. That's probably just fatigue and experience. So it looks like Poverty Bay up for second. Ottawa in lane five up for third. Another Ottawa crew coming home for third, is it? In lane That's two. Uh, Eastern Bay. Eastern Bay, Bay yeah. pardon. In lane two, that's Ottawa. Very similar colours, the red and the blacks. So title goes to Wanganui, they're 16 and under women's K2 500. Just the light? Yeah. Swing it around to there to see if it helps. The oh no, it's all. It's stretch the. Cool, getting things sorted here as we move deep into the second session. Down at the pontoon, the start pontoon, we're looking at the uh, K1 500s. Two heats for men. So we've got, and they're four heats, aren't they? Or nine, oh no, we're just missing lane one for this heat, for the first one, but gosh, it's still good depth. Anywho, uh, lane two, no athlete in lane one. Lane two, we've got Mana. That's Max. We've got Liam Rogers from Ottawa in lane three. Maya Campbell from Poverty Bay in lane four. Charlie Mason from Bay of Plenty in lane five. Matt McKendry from Poverty Bay in lane six. Kaya Gilbertson, North Shore, lane seven. Dylan, <laughs> these guys are side by side and everything <laughs> they do, don't they? Dylan uh, from Ottawa in lane eight. And James Hamblin, uh, Poverty Bay in lane nine. They must look across, oh, and you again, oh, you again, <laughs> they look across, of course, they're all good mates. Uh, funny how they randomly get put side by side. <laughs> Three, five, is it? Yeah, lane five, is it? So very handy that Charlie Mason is pulled out. But the rest of them are making up for it. I see lanes two and second from the far side as well. Looking pretty good. That's Dylan Monk, of course, and inside of him is um, Kaya Gilbertson. So those two will be battling away all day. But back here on the inside, Liam Rogers also 
a good start. A settle down, heading towards the halfway. But it's quite a sizable margin there for Dylan Monk at the moment. Cut the line. He looked left over to uh, to Gilbertson. Yeah, this is where his adversary is. Oh, he's he's, <laughs> he's gonna hear him coming through. Now it's only the heat, so these guys know what to do. We just need to qualify. Comes through. The coaches would have told them you need to be in the top three. You need to be in the top two. Whatever the case may be. Ooh, look, he's just coming home strongly here, lane yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. That's Liam. Of course, Liam Rogers coming home very strongly. Yeah, very determined from Rogers. Yeah. The other two, Monk and Gilbertson, really just doing enough. They they established a bit of a lead early on, did enough to hold on to that. Rogers stormed home to get third, and he was just in front of um, Maya Campbell. So I'm assuming here with two heats that we'll have three from this heat, three from the next heat. And then we'll have the one semi-final of which they'll get the other three athletes to make up a nine-lane final. So that's why we saw that little rush on just to yeah. keep us placed, keep us, you know, be in the top three. So this one here, event 44, race 44, this is the second heat of these um, under-80 men's. So we've got all nine lanes covered here. So Karapiro, Ryland Lowe, Maxwell Kennedy from Poverty Bay in lane two, Lewis Monk from Ottawa in lane three, Ryden Story, North Shore, lane four, another North Shore athlete, Ace Oscar Dooney, North Shore in lane five, uh, Julian De Silva, Hawks Bay in six, Noah Andrews, White in lane seven, Tiago Chamberlain from Ottawa in lane eight, and Ollie Egan, Poverty Bay over there in lane five. I think Ollie's been in lane nine most of his races, actually. Looking through that. Nice lemon over there. In one of the earlier races, we saw Chamberlain get an outstanding start, didn't we, in a thousand? So we'll see what he does here. He's way over in lane eight, second from the outside. Kennedy from Poverty Bay in lane two. Started now, second heat. 18 and under men's K1 500. Good starts on the inside and way over a second from the far side as well. The rest are starting to settle down. But certainly the damage has been done there from Max Kennedy in two. And uh, over on the far side, Tiago Chamberlain of Aroa. So those two establishing themselves at the moment. The rest have got some work to do, but there's plenty of time in this race. So it's the second of the heats. Yeah, there's uh, two athletes that are really sticking out here, isn't it? One, sadly, one's in lane two, and the other one's right across the other side in lane eight. Six athletes wedged between them. Just seeing um, Willie here, Max, just slowing it up. Yep, he's pretty well up at the moment. Looking good with Kennedy on the inside. So this is the situation I've had throughout this race, right from about the first 50. These two established themselves. So Chamberlain certainly got it way out in lane eight. It's almost as if Kennedy 
heard that comment and decided to bite it. He hasn't looked across at all. He's totally focused and he's coming back strongly, but Chamberlain has just got that half boat length advantage on him and Chamberlain takes it. Kennedy second and in lane three, that's Lewis Monk who gets home. And that was lane nine out there, is it? Finishing, yep. uh, that's uh, Ollie Egan. So the first four getting through comfortably. And we're seeing a standard that makes us salivate when we look forward to the finals. Yes. So probably those guys there will probably go through to a um, semi-final to make up a nine-lane final, which would be great to see. Because it was good seeing the medal ceremony. The yeah. Guys all in their uniforms on the dais. Yeah. So the smiles and the cameras. Yeah, a good photographer. <laughs> And also to have some of those um, established athletes presenting them as yeah. well. Did they get you as a life member no. to present? No. That one, aren't you? Dad, we had this old guy. I yeah, don't know who was. I don't know who he was. Right. So three heats now of the Open and 23 and under men's K1 500. So we had Danny who was racing. How we chat with Danny? It's been now. If this doesn't age you, John, nothing will. I said, "Oh, it's good to see you back, Danny. This was at the medal ceremony. Good to see you back." I said, "Oh, it's been 23 years <laughs> since I last raced." Wow. <laughs> see, it's, he hasn't been back in 23 years, and I mean, oh, because uh, of course I was long the time before he started racing. Yeah. So that, that just. Uh, yeah, anyway, he won't go there. But anyway, good to see him back, and he's jumping up now into, obviously, the Open. Yep. I think he's a little bit too old to be in the 23 and under, so welcome to the Open. A little bit too young to yeah. be a master. Uh, uh, yeah, so, unless he's got a son out there, uh, Danny, Danny's second. Um, Grant Clancy from North Shore in lane three. Curtis Simri from Mana in lane four. Zuck Firkins from Poverty Bay in lane five, Kalani Gilbertson in lane six. Um, I'm not sure, of course, Logan yeah. Ferguson from Karapiro in lane seven, and Ben Nichols from Howard in lane eight. Great noise out there at the moment, uh, away from the canoeing, and that is the couple of really good kids' slides there, and lots of squealing and laughter from youngsters having a good time. Just had a look at that slide. I don't think you or I would fit on. <laughs> well, definitely those. not me. Uh, so I, can, I sometimes come out here living in Hamilton. I have a day off work. And I want you going to say, <laughs> day off, John, you hardly work as it is. Yeah, so I come out here. <laughs> bring my pipes out, play, play out here where nobody can hear me. And um, yeah, I don't know. Up there, and it's always there. Always seems to be a lot of people. It's a good domain. It's a fantastic sporting area around Cambridge, isn't it? So it's uh, ideal. Here we go. So if we've got a gap there in the we field, have. yeah. So yeah, it looks like we have, and it looks like it might be Emery. Yeah. So yeah, probably just got too much. 
So Danny Morrison on the inside and Grant Clancy out of him. A gap there. Zach Ferkins out of lane five. Kalani Gilbertson, then Logan Ferguson and Ben Nichols. So lane six and seven. Well, five and six really, isn't it? So I look across there now, Zach Ferkins and Kalani Gilbertson, as you'd expect. Danny's, I think, all of a sudden realised that, whoa, <laughs> I remember where I should be. Good on him, there's a cut, cut into the 200, I think I might just give that to Gilbertson. Yeah, me. yep. Just coming through. Ferguson on his right and Ferkins on his left and that might be a bit of a battle in fact the battle for second and third is shaping up to be the of most interest as Gilbertson leads from North Shore in lane six Gosh, he looks good. yeah but look at this now in lane yeah. three yeah big push through from Grant Clancy He comes up for second. And then Poverty Bay's Zach Ferkins third, with Logan Ferguson in fourth. That's the first of our heats of three, the open and under 23 men's K1 500. Well, that next heat we see uh, Quade Thompson there. He's already punched the air with excitement when he won a title before lunch. As he ought. That's a, it was a great race by Yeah, him. yeah. And he had, he had a few talented guys racing along and pushing them through, so might he'd probably be looking for a clean sweep here, taking out both titles. So Thompson will start in lane six. To his right will be Esther Hazen of North Shore and Sam Lees. Also of North Shore, but on the inside it'll be Gene Prato of North Shore. So that's um, four North Shore competitors in the second heat. Liam Lace out of Whanganui and James Monroe from Otago. Ashton Riser, North Shore. So that's uh, completed uh, seven, two through to eight. So Thompson won the uh, 1,000 ahead of Clancy and Gilbertson. Now lining up for the second heat of the 500 out of lane six. Ready. Yeah. Gosh, I thought I heard two um, two hooter blasts there, <laughs> John. No, I was imagining things. So a good clean start. 
still very, very, very close. Just coming out now, maybe it's those three in the middle. So that is uh, James Munro, Ashton Riser, and Quade Thompson. Well, as I mentioned when the thousand was on, I was interested to see what Munro, what sort of form Munro was in. Well, he's he's up there and he's uh, challenging alongside Riser and Thompson. In fact, Thompson and Munro might be just about nose to nose at the moment. Thompson will give him the edge. What sort of finish have the rest got? Oh, I think it's the orange boat down here, John. Is that James Munro? That from is, certainly is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's got the bit between now. Oh, yeah. So Munro, with 100 to go, leads Thompson. Splitting those two is Ricer. Uh, but Munro is scorching away with this now. A good warm-up earlier today with the 1,000. And he comes home strongly in this second heat of the K1500. So he's just putting out a wee warning that, yep, I'm in not bad nick as we go into the finals uh, later on. In lane five, that was Ricer and Thompson in third. And over in lane nine, or lane eight is it, must be, because there weren't nine starters, that'll be um, Sam Lees. Yep, Sam yes, Lees Sam. of North Shore. Yeah, Sam. Now, we had a call that there are race numbers need to be taken back to race control, so please do that. They're particularly short of number twos. So <laughs> that doesn't sound good, does it? Uh, but if you've got a number two, or more than one number two over there, uh, please drop them back. They're just short of numbers. Race numbers need to go back now, please. So, just heard it. All race 47, all clear to start. This is our third heat of the, third and final heat of the open and under 23 men's K1 500. Gosh, there's still some big names to Yeah. I'm just looking yeah. at Casey Nataki, Max Brown, Andrew Roy, Thomas McGill. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. And they've raced each other so often yeah. over the years, and there no surprises. Yeah. So we've got Neil Gard from Ottawa in lane two, Andrew Roy from North Shore in lane three. Uh, Casey Nataki from North Shore Lane 4, Max Brown from Wanganui Lane 5, Thomas McGibbon from Ottawa in Lane 6, and Joshua Bull from North Shore in Lane 7. So this is our third and final heat. Well, Casey Nataki and... Uh James Monroe combined, I think, didn't they, to win a title at the Oceanias in Australia in the C2. The what? C2. Never C2? Yeah. Never You've done that, haven't you? The canoeing, C2. you know, where you kneel, I don't you kneel down and... I jest. Yeah, C2. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had to rub my eyes when I first saw a C2 on our New Zealand water. It was, not it? It's I, an amazing... I, yeah. Oh, God, the balance that's required is something um, else, isn't it? They are... Yeah, they're amazing. I always associate uh, C2 with the former Eastern Bloc. Although there yeah. was a, a, um, a British pairing, the Train Brothers, um, that came out in the late 90s. It was big in Canada too, eh? Yeah, well, that's I think it, it is. started, it's didn't it? It's Canadian. Yeah, that's yeah. The C is it's C, for yeah. The Canadian yeah. class. But certainly the Hungarians and yeah. those sorts of countries yeah. you know, and the Soviet made Union. it their it own. The Soviet Union. Yeah. Soviet Union, what was that? Yeah. I think the um, yeah. People's Republic of China also mm. have um, have adopted it. Mind you, they'll take on every any sport and they do it well. So, yeah, well, I, uh, the first time I commentated on canoeing at an Olympic Games and I'd never seen the Canadian version of it. 
So it caught me a bit by surprise. I knew about it, but to, to watch them in action was fantastic. So here we go. We've got these half dozen away. This is the third and final heat of the Open and Men's Under 23 K1 500 with Neil Gard from Arawa uh, being dropped from lane two, but up alongside the leaders is Andrew Roy, Casey Nataki is there in uh, lane four. Uh, Max Brown, of course, New Zealand representative in lane five. Tom McGibbon in lane six. And Joshua Bull up on the far side. As to be expected, John, the, these guys, no inch given. No. Casey Nataki. Max Brown in the white boat. Outside of him is uh, Tom McGibbon of Arawa. I think Tom's looking very, very good here. And it uh, looks like going to our one of our North Shore paddlers there. So that would look very Casey Nataki. Max just dropping back. And then right over the other side, it's Thomas McGibbon. So yeah. I would say that we're looking at First three here, somebody down the bottom here. Max Brown's had to wind it up a wee bit. Yeah. So he notices that up on the far side from him, Joshua Bull is um, starting to steer him down. And Brown times it nicely, just gets the nose there in front. So Brown finishes in third place behind uh, McGibbon and Nataki. Again, that's going to be a, an impressive final later in the day. Enticing, tantalising, open and under-23 men's K1-500. Some of the masters are lining up down at the pontoon, just coming into place now for a straight final. It's the masters men's K2-500. And... Um, there's a few names there you've seen before. There is a few names, and I, I've noticed that we just see Masters men. So this is yeah. all our age group Masters men combined. So it was uh, be wonderful to add up some of these ages. I think that's what you should do. Go yeah. down and have a chat to some of them later yeah, yeah. and say, who's the oldest of you? Because yeah. we have the women as well. I remember last year's women, there were some... I mean, there's a, oh God, a name just went out of my mind, but here every year, yes, yeah. um, aged about 104 yeah. and still doing it strong. I, I think, I think Emmett and Walker combined their ages would have over 100. Yeah. Yeah. Not the sort of thing you want to hear over the PA system as you're getting ready for a race. So sorry, lads. Yeah. Not. Sounds like a comedy duo, doesn't yeah. it? Emmett and Walker, a detective agency. Speaking of that, the Masters women um, are on tomorrow. Can we just put a wee call out to Danica? Danica, could you come up to our commentary area? We need your PIN number. We can't see the drone. Thanks, Danica. You tried every pin number, you know, and now it's, <laughs> and now it's saying you're, <laughs> you're sorry, Danica, you are locked out. <clears throat> I'll be interested to hear what Steve Richards has to say about um, Olympic selection. Yes. Doesn't that, you know, it's not that long ago since Tokyo and what a fantastic event that was with, you know, the women doing so well and... We're just lucky to have those. I was I'm yeah. talking to athletes from all sports when they came back from Japan. And I was just like, um, the atmosphere that we know well, yeah. you were there, weren't you, George? No, I didn't go to that one. Well, I didn't, I, didn't I, make the cut? I, no, I just pulled out yeah. the COVID thing, didn't, yeah, yeah, didn't throw yeah. me. Yeah, but they were just saying the athletes would come in, um, do their thing and gone. Yeah. Do your thing and go, do your thing and go. So you've got to take your hat off to um, Japan for, for doing it in the first place, I guess. Um, I was, I've just come back from Europe, actually, from France, 
was over there for the Rugby World Cup and I also, everything in Paris was decked out for the Olympics. And I, actually, I didn't know what was coming first. The, the Olympics, I think, stunning, the Olympics or the Rugby World Cup. So um, yeah, that, 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 that will be an exciting um, um, an event, yeah. especially after um, Japan. Anyway, we've got another great start for our third and final heat of the Masters. No, sorry. Keep ahead of myself. This is straight final. Yep. Masters men, K2 500. So all the combined ages. Just down here, North Shore, Spencer and... Oh, yeah, Garth, Spencer and Reed. Very good. Four over from them is the Whitra Club. Barnes and Burbage. So that'll be Troy. Good to see Troy out there and furthest right out there in North Shore, Simpkins and Logue. So I think those are our first three places, somewhere wedged in between are a whole lot of other old fogies. <laughs> I just, oh, look at right over the, that far shot, uh, lane eight, John, in that orange boat. That's North Shore, Simpkins and Logue. Looking good, just in here in the centre, Whitechapel, Barnes and Burbridge. That, yep. That just got very good. Grown up, thanks to our IT. Yep, lady. Oh, well, I broadcast a pin number <laughs> yeah. now, so everyone knows it. Yeah. Well, this is close, isn't it? So two white boats and a red and white, and they're stretched across. Centre, centre looks to have it in lane four. Is that lane four? Ooh, yes, I think we'll five. Get it to lane I can't four. remember. Can't no, read it from here. That's white. That. That's Troy. Oh, here we go again. Another one of these. Oh no, not as close as what we have seen. But I think we could safely give that to lane four, over the far side, giving it all the way. That was uh, Simpkins and Logue, John. Yeah. Just down here in the foreground, lane one. Another team from. Um, North Shore, lane one? Yep, I think so. Yep, yeah. Spencer and Reed. Yeah. Really good and a close finish as we just see it again on our replay that we're watching, which you can do on your live stream. And I say we're watching a replay because um, we're about eight or nine seconds ahead of, <laughs> well, the coverage is eight or nine seconds behind uh, live. So we're able just to look down and make sure that we get the call correct occasionally. <laughs> Occasionally, yeah. the operative word. <laughs> right. Good That's stuff. The Masters men. Yep. So up to some, uh, back to the ladies for the under 18s, two heats, K1 500. So no, no athlete in lane one. So we've got Mia Padrup from Whitechapel in lane. God. We can read these names out. Yeah. They're so busy and we're still only in our first day. Uh, Mia Padrup from Waitra in lane two. Addison O'Leary from Wanganui in lane three. Grace Richardson from Bay of Plenty in lane four. Jessica McDonald from Ottawa in lane five. Jacqueline Kennedy, Poverty Bay in lane six. Eva Fuller from Eastern Bay in lane seven. And Hope Duffett from North Shore in lane eight. Gosh, you look at the under 18, you think under 18, that's like year 13, or just finishing year, maybe going into their first year at university. And man, these girls and guys, they can paddle and get the boat up and going. And you're just, you're just sitting here saying, I just hope they carry on. Yeah. So much talent out here and it's a privilege to watch it, everyone, um, from those under-14s who we hope will carry on, at least some of them, uh, to develop into outstanding under-16s, sensational under-20s and magnificent open paddlers to keep on this great reputation that New Zealand has. So great start here out there in lane two. That's Mia Padrup, White Slap flying out of the blocks and still going. I think, it, see, these athletes are so good, John, they just, they look at these conditions 
of course, this is what this is what m most of them have all trained for, right? So they've done all their conditioning work. So in the last month, they've probably been doing all their VO2 work. You know, it's getting the body used to the pain. And in the last two weeks, two and a bit weeks, probably they've just been doing speed work. So they've been chomping at the bit, ready to go for the nationals, ready to go, yep. ready to go. And look, we're gifted with with such good weather, such fair conditions that they just want to say, right. Um, I want to do a PB out here, um, which is perfect conditions for it, plus held starts, good competition to push you along down the course. It's coming out here yeah. um, from the far side now. That's Jacqueline Kennedy in the white. Kennedy. Yeah, she, she started almost as well as um, Padrut in lane two, and uh, they were going bow to bow, basically, but it does certainly appear now that out of lane six, a Poverty Bay athlete, that's Jacqueline Kennedy. Not the first person to be called Jacqueline Kennedy. Um, Eva Fuller is in lane seven. And on the inside of Kennedy, in the, uh, in the pink, and that's Grace Richardson. Oh no, Jessica, uh, Jessica McDonald. So Padrut has just dropped back slightly and is in danger now of not finishing second, but I think she's, oh, now we glanced to her right shoulder that she's um, under pressure here, but that's she a is, really fantastic performance from Jekyll and Kennedy. Yes, another close finish for second and third here, John. Oh, yeah. a beat, beat, a distinct beat, beat. Yeah, I think Padrut ahead of uh, Jessica McDonald. And close over there too, between lane seven and eight, Eva Fuller and Hope Duffett for the next positions. We're rocking through the program. That's event number 49. Second heat now is event number 50 for the day. And it's K1 500 women getting into position already. Uh, Hannah Webb starts in lane two from Poverty Bay. Uh, Arawa Canoe Club is represented by Chloe Akoi. From Mana we have Paige Truern. Poppy Barnes is there from Waitara in five. Amber Dearness, Poverty Bay in six. Uh, Hannah Baxter is there in lane seven, representing Eastern Bay. And the Hawke's Bay representative, and this is Abby Gold in lane number eight. Second heat, under 18 women's K1, 500. Just looking at event number 41 and confirming the result of the 16 and under men's K4 500. Hawks Bay winning that in 145.73. That's um, seven, six and a half seconds clear of Arawa. And Poverty Bay were third, taking the bronze medal. The 16 and under women's K2 500. Anderson and Toy from Whanganui over Poverty Bay and Arawa. So gold to Whanganui. That was uh, an eye opener the way they performed in that race, that's for sure. At Masters Men's final, confirmed that. 0.26 of a second separated Barnes and Burbage of Waitara from Simpkins and Logue of North Shore. Spencer and Reed were third. So this start sees a couple of them drop away over the first 50 metres, so slowish out of the start, but the rest seem to have got it pretty much perfectly. 
So you look at lanes two and three, and five, six, and seven, little separates them. So Hannah Webin too. In the black top, it's uh, Chloe Arkoy in lane three. So they're keeping an eye on each other without having to turn their heads. They're right close to each other. Poppy Barnes and Amber Dennis also, similar situation. And Hannah Baxter as well. So five of them in, with a chance of finishing in the top three or four of this second heat. Well, you pick out the who's the in front there. We're just looking <laughs> at the drone here. Yeah. Oh, because that's just a side-on angle all the way down. And it's just, yeah, it's just so very, very close. Probably just lane three, wouldn't you say, John, just poking her nose out in the front. That's Chloe Arcoy. As, as we're coming down here. Yep. But it's going to be a big fight for second, third and fourth. Oh, and Chloe might be losing yes. ground here to uh, Hannah Baxter in lane seven. And also perhaps Poppy Barnes in the middle. You can't separate these three from our angle. And there's a fast finish two from Hannah Webb of Poverty Bay. So these four will go to the line. It looks like the two blue boats will get there first. No, it won't be the t first two boats. Uh, they, one of them will get there first or not. Oh, close. Gosh, that's five and three together. That's uh, Poppy Barnes and uh, Chloe Arkoy. Really close, those two. In lane seven, it was Hannah Baxter, and on the inside here, Hannah Webb. So we'll leave the clever people to sort that one out. So that's... You could throw a blanket over that, but sadly, from that five, we might have to have somebody going through to the semi-final. In fact, seeing it... Again, on the finish, um, Hannah Webb did beat Hannah Baxter. So Hannah Webb from Poverty Bay takes the third place behind whoever won. And that was either Arkoy or Barnes. Gosh, it's 50 events down. Yeah, great, isn't it? 50 events down, we're still... Still 150,000 to go. Yeah. We're yeah. doing 70 events today, which is pretty good, so we're... All right, Getting through so those. Another couple of heats coming up here for the under 16 men staying in the 500 distance. Oh, we got, yeah, John, look at this, nine, nine lanes, two heats of nine. Yeah, we like that. Do, we do like that. So, anyway, in Wanganui, in lane one, we've got Ben Tullock, uh, Rourke, Dooney from North Shore in lane two, uh, Nukutai from Hawke's Bay in lane three, AJ Kinsella. Poverty Bay in lane four, Lee Karapiro in lane five, Sean Burgess from Hawke's Bay in lane six, Dane Worcester from Bay of Plenty in seven, Nathan Eloff from Mana in eight, and Lewis Monk from Ottawa in nine. I don't know how many Ks Lewis <laughs> chalk up down the Yeah, yeah. Some of these. Young guys have done some big distances already. So two heats of the under 16 men. This is the first one. It looks like all nine are present. Yep, they're all ready. Just waiting for lane two, just to straighten up. Then we put the hex on it. That's our first false start of the day. Let's hope it's the last. start there, so that's young Lee Hunter from Karapiro. Gosh, there wasn't much in it either, <laughs> you know, just a fraction, but that's enough. Yeah. 
quite good, the fact that you can't now paddle off into the distance and yeah. come back, eh? Yeah, so that's what's good about these conditions. Just remember that, guys, if you do find yourself in a false starting heat or a false starting race, just back up. Don't do a good clean start now. Don't go and do the big Yui out in the middle because it's calm enough for us all to back up now. So great start now, all nine boats away. Looks like lane down here, lane one, John. Yeah, top, yeah, I think so. And a flyer. He's in the bright yellow. Ben Tullock from Monganui. Still might have it. And then right over the far side, perhaps, just perhaps, it's Lewis Monk from Arwen. <laughs> so somewhere between these two guys are another seven athletes. But at this very, very early stage of the race, it's probably Lewis over in, far in lane nine, and just down here on the inside, as John says, in the yellow boat, Ben Tullock from Monganui. Dane Wooster starting to emerge as well, and also um, Nukatai. So this is going to be another tight one. As you'd expect, they're racing only over 500 metres, so... You know, you can have um, one hundredth of seconds separating them as they hit the line. But no doubt from our vantage point here, which is way up in at the tower, it does look as though Lewis Monk is leading. On the other side, Ben Tullock. And uh, tucked up somewhere in between are the other seven. And they're now starting to spread out quite a bit. Looks like a wee bit of a fight happening between here, lane three and... Seven is it? Lane three and seven. So that's uh, Nukatai and Dane Worcester. One of these lads have got to get through. Perhaps we might be doing the first four in the field. Oh, I wouldn't know if they're doing heats. Oh, I think Nukatai's got up on Worcester. Yes. So lane three will be in third place, but way out on the far side, no doubt. Lewis Monk is going to take it from Ben Tullock. Uh, close between three and seven, that's Nukatai and, uh, and Wooster. And Nukatai takes that, and Wooster is fourth. Uh, not far behind in lane four was uh, AJ Kinsella. Gosh, he had got, he's got some kick on him. Yeah. That Lewis Monk, jeebers. So there's the two, there's Dylan and Lewis here today, the Monks. Each of them doing their bit. Now it's good stuff coming through from that one. That's the first of the two heats. Second heat now is um, Oliver Hutchinson of Hawke's Bay, uh, Caden Thrupp from Poverty Bay, then two North Shore athletes, that's Jake Burta and Rory Orman, Martini Baker of Hawke's Bay, Luca Cartwright Carapiro, another from North Shore, that makes it three in this event, that's Riley Scott, then Oliver McDonald of Ottawa, Jack Cooper, Waitara. Just a reminder, folks, make sure you bring your numbers back. You don't want to get on the wrong side of Tony. So you ask Craig about that. <laughs> so please bring all your numbers back uh, that's probably a, a thing for the officials too just do a check inside your tent you'll find them underneath packs and just lying on the ground so point them out and order someone to bring them down because otherwise you'll be paddling without a number they're getting that low on them so a great start, John, coming out of here. It looks... Uh, I don't know. Seems to be like the closest to us and over the far side again. They don't make our job That's easy. That's right. No, they don't. <laughs> but I, I agree. Hutchinson, Hutchinson and Thrupp on the inside. Yeah. Um, but moving up to is Borta. So that's the first three lanes covered. One, two and three. They're all in the picture. But go further out to uh, Riley Scott in lane seven and Oliver McDonald in eight. Well, certainly with Riley Scott in lane seven looking to have the lead at the moment. I've got to say, the, the guys who are towards the front, 
They, they deserve to be there. They just, they just look like their techniques are very, very good. So they had great coaching, and these young men under 16, they've got some strength in there. But as I say, I probably harp on that a lot, you know, just concentrating on their, your techniques, your strength, and, your, and of course your endurance will come with time. So certainly Riley Scott from North Shore in lane seven has this race. Uh, the battle down on the inside between Hutchinson and Thrupp continues, but Hutchinson now leads, and it's Boerta who is up for perhaps third, but still over is McDonald in lane eight. So now a big surge coming through in lane one. So this is Hutchinson coming through for second place. He takes a big, long look over his right shoulder and says, I can just cruise it from here. His coach might have other words to say, but yeah. uh, he's done it well. So a nice, comfortable second place for him. In lane three, that's Jake Borter. In lane two is Caden Thrupp. And up on the top, that looks as though that is uh, Oliver McDonald who will finish in the top six. And Martinia Baker. So that completes our heats of the under-16 yep. men's. Well done, each and every one of you. Good racing. Excellent racing, in fact. Right, so, starting with the under-16s, have a look at this, folks. Three heats. Three heats of the under-16s. So, we've got Holly Rowland in, from Eastern Bay in lane two. Alexis Toy from Monganui in lane three. Hannah Gard from Ottawa in lane four. Victoria Heaveneth from Mana in lane five, Emma Purton from Bay of Plenty in six, and Kira Hodgson from Hawke's Bay in seven. Thanks. Great service to us up here people climbing up and down the stairs to give us the up-to-date fields for the uh, semis and finals and so on. Now we've got nobody to blame, John. Oh, no, I know. If, we, if we lose them, if you lose them, there's no one to blame. Yeah, no, we have been very, very well looked after. I could ring a bell and I could go down and get them, pick them up and climb the stairs. That would be good for me. Oh. Wouldn't be good for the listeners, though. No, no puffing and huffing. Yeah. So, yes, three heats of these uh, under-16 women. Done a lot of racing already in this program. Gosh, that's a busy jetty. That is a busy, busy jetty. Oh, is that a... No, I think, oh. I think what's happening is we're... Um, it's, 333 metres per second. We're hearing the buzzer come over our phone here. Uh, and we're I the see. sound come later. So Holly Rowland on the inside. Good start from her. So too Alexis Toy. That's this side of the field covered. And then as, as we've seen so much, we have to go over to the other side before we pick up maybe the next uh, paddler. That's Kira uh, Hodson. Emma Turton inside her. And in the middle, it's uh, Victoria Haveneth and Hannah Gard. Now, these are under 16s. So some of them will have gone through that under 14 group and uh, developed nicely, kept up the sport, remain, remained encouraged by particularly the performances of our wonderful Olympic and world representatives. Just um, such a bonus to the sport to have those people performing so fantastically well on the world stage. And that's the inspiration that these youngsters need. So Alexis Toy, already a title here with the Whanganui group in a K2. Toy ahead of Roland. And these two really have just taken this field apart. This is the first of the heats, so three heats in this. So it's a matter now of just 
checking where you are in the field, knowing that you're comfortably through. Use this to make sure you maintain your form and concentration and work to your game plan. Now just digging it in a wee bit here is Alexis Toy. So Toy takes the first heat of the women's under 16 K1 500. Holly Rowland in second place from Eastern Bay. And it'll be Hannah Gard of Aroa, who is third ahead of Kyra Hodgson of Hawke's Bay. Oops, no, sorry, spoke too soon. Oh, yes. Frustrating. Oh, poor girl. She was nearly there. So what might have caused that? Uh, the IRB seen it, a very vigilant. <laughs> yes. Straight there. Oh, we just saw her out of shot. Oh, <laughs> it's a good, great time of the year to uh, be having it. The water's not too cold yet. As he says, as we're up here. Yeah, that I was going to say, <laughs> I don't want to get in there. I, I still, I'm still out there swimming in the surf. Yep. I, I love swimming in the surf. I love swimming in the waves. Get out there. But actually, I dare say, being the walrus I am, the cooler it is, the better I like it. <laughs> Coming from uh, your neck of the woods, yeah, the yeah. West Coast, being the Waitaki boy I am. Yeah, she's taken care of. My wife goes up to, or oh, I join her occasionally to Otaki and swim in the pool yeah. up there. It's a good pool up there. Yeah, Hirua Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. uh, the old 33 and a third. Yeah. Coming from, you know, doing a bit of swimming background. I'm still actually get out there and do a little bit um, in the pools here in Hamilton because they've got a beautiful 50 metre pool. And so I do 25s. I like the 25s. You know, three turns wow. for 100. Yeah, the one, the one at Cambridge here yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. We were there yesterday. Every morning of Thursday evening for the swim squad, they turn it into a 50. <laughs> so when you go on the Friday morning, it's, gosh, it's a long way down there. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. Meter pool. You're counting your strokes and then you oh. think, um, this is far too long. No, good on you, mate, for still being out there, though. You've got to keep active. So this is our second heat? Yes. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, second. So I've got Rosara Davis, North Shore, uh, Jacqueline Kennedy, gosh, we mentioned her name only a few minutes ago, Zoe Anderson, who was the one who uh, teamed up with Alexis Toy for Wanganui earlier, Michaela Bates, Peyton Cortell, Stella Crossan, and uh, Helena Pernea. So we've got uh, two from Arawa, two from Hawke's Bay, and one each from North Shore, Poverty Bay, and Wanganui. They're ready to go. You can hear the sound, Rosara Davis on the inside from North Shore. Hers is a good start. In fact, looking through, there's only a fourth competitor in the one in the middle. And that'll be uh, Michaela Bates, look to get away a little bit slowly and is now just trying to regain her composure and get back up with the field. But lane um, three, Jacqueline Kennedy, Zoe Anderson will expect her to be uh, n noticed throughout this. Stella Crossan over in lane seven and Helena Pernea, both from Arawa. Jacqueline Kennedy at the moment. Just uh, Michaela Bates from Hawke's Bay just seems to having a little bit of trouble there. Yep. She's brought it online now, which is great. 
but lane three. Oh, yeah, she's yeah, still going Jacqueline for it. Kennedy. She's only just raced. Yeah. Maybe she needs to do a, five, a couple of thousands. <laughs> well, she's holding it together well. So Jacqueline Kennedy out of Poverty Bay and um, Stella Crossan of Arawa. She's in lane seven, so second from the far side. But really, Jacqueline Kennedy is <laughs> just pushing through without any problem at all. Absolutely. She, it's like she used those... Uh, First few races, right, I'm warmed up now, coach, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Look, she said she's still kicking at home. She is a good two to three lengths ahead of second place. There's binoculars on her, totally focused, head not moving at all, eyes glued to that spot just behind the finish line. Here she goes and gets the buzzer now and wins it in lane three. Ooh, a nice nice tussle, Coming lane six lane and six. seven. Yes. So seven gets it ahead of six, and not far behind was four. So that's uh, Stella Crossan, Peyton Quartel, and uh, Zoe Anderson. But a really good race there from Jacqueline Kennedy. She wins the second of the heats of the women's 16 and under. So well done, lane five. So that's... Uh, Jacqueline Kennedy. Yeah, Jacqueline. Yeah. No. Just coming home now. Had a few bit of trouble in the start. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Michaela. Well done. So back up to the pontoon we go, and it's the third and final heat. Haley Stewart starts in uh, lane two, uh, Wanganui. Uh, Mana has uh, Katia, Katia Cameron Bennett, Taylor Newman from Poverty Bay, Arabella Harrison is one of two Hawke's Bay competitors, Leandra Owens from North Shore, Arawa's Emma Dixon, and Layla Stovall of Hawke's Bay. So two Hawke's Bay and one each from Whanganui. Mana, Poverty Bay, North Shore, and Arawa. Unbelievably calm. I was just, I was just thinking it's got that um, definite winter or autumn little bit of well, you look at the time, it's like half past. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had that, we've missed the brightest part yeah, of the day. Yeah. So it's kind of like as soon as the, the uh, fog lifted or the mist lifted, we got a little bit of sunshine, and now the sun's disappeared over there by that cloud. So the last heat, heat three of the under-16 woman, all well underway. Looks like we've got all the athletes have turned up. Oh, gosh, who's that over there in lane four flying out? Taylor Newman, Poverty Bay. She has got out of the blocks very, very quickly. And over there, I would probably say, <laughs> second in, Emma Dixon yeah. from Ottawa. So... And I, what do we say, lanes two, then we miss one, and then we go, and then we miss one, and then we go. So it's a well spread out field, so it's probably coming down between lane two, that's uh, from Mana, lane three, sorry, the uh, two over. 
I think it's doubled. Yeah. Is it? uh, or is that Newman in lane four? She's yes. Two, three, four. Newman and four. And then over to Dixon and Stubble on the outsides. Mm. But we'll soon find out. They'll sort yeah. themselves out in a moment. As that again into a more advantageous position for the spectators to view. They'll be cheering on their particular teammate. And it does look as though it's in lane four. The uh, Taylor Newman of Poverty Bay. Just, in, just down here on yeah. closest lane to us, lane two, Hayley Stewart from Wanganui. Just a little bit slower out of the blocks than the young lady ahead of her, but it's going to be close <laughs> when she looks right over to the other side, side by side. What's that, lane seven and eight? Uh, yeah. So that's uh, Emma and Layla pushing one another along. Very lonely race out there, lane four. She's doing well, almost like a time trial for her. Yep. <laughs> That's a big victory there for Poverty Bay's Taylor Newman. She gets up nicely to win that. I'm not sure where that um, extra voice is coming from, but uh, will probably provide us with some entertainment. <laughs> the place is haunted. Uh, Hayley, Hayley Stewart gets there just ahead of Layla Stovall and Emma Dixon. Three heats gone then of the 16 and under women's K1 500. That was one of the, probably one of the biggest winning margins there. Be interesting to see her times compared to the other two heats when they come up, John. So we've got a B final coming up for the under 14 men's. That's an event 56. So we've got uh, in lane one, Owen Hank from Owen Hawk. Hawk sorry. Yeah, I, I called him Hank before too. <laughs> sorry, Owen. Owen Hawk from North Shore in lane one. George Hamlet from uh, uh, Hawke's Bay in lane two. Jacob Robbers from Carapiro in lane th uh, three. Roman Wayne from Bay of Plenty in lane four. Gus Kinsella, Poverty B lane five. Mana Wainohu from Poverty Bay in six. Carter Hills, North Shore in lane seven. Daniel Paneer from Ottawa in lane eight. And Troy Worcester from Bay of Plenty in lane nine. So even though this is a B final, some of these athletes will be just hammer and tong. So they, they, we're really looking at how you rank in New Zealand from 10 onwards because we've got the A final coming. But they would like to, in these beautiful conditions, like to compare their times to uh, some of the times in the A final. So there'd be a, that's always an interesting exercise that in itself. Looks like we've got everybody in. It's all, all lined up. Big thank you to those guys holding the boats and the starters. So a nice clean start from this B final. Here all the lads are out. This is the under 14 men's. Got John, they're, they're under 14. <laughs> look, look at they're flying down the course. Oh. Under 14, and look at them go. I just checked the program to make sure they were under 14s. That's an impressive start from them. Carter Hills of North Shore up in lane seven. Looks good, and you come in three from him. And you've got um, uh, Roman Wayne. There from Bay of Plenty. Jacob Robbers Ooh. on the inside of him. 
Just a bit of a whoopsie there. He did. He, he absolutely stopped the lane. Oh, and he stopped again. Lane seven. He was right out there. That's Carter Hills from North Shore. And something's happened. Maybe something in his steering or his seat has given way. He, he stopped in a hurry. Maybe a little wing nut has come loose on his steering or something, but he, he, the whole brakes went on there. Now the other, he's being swamped here, coming through. He had a beautiful start. And the other burglars are coming through on him. Yeah. In lanes four, five, and six. So Roman Wayne yeah. in lane four and uh, Gus Kinsella in lane five. So we've got uh, down on the inside, it's Hawk of North Shore, then Hamlet. So they're out of it at the moment, but then in lane three, Jacob Robbers. Uh, lane four, Roman Wayne. Lane five, Gus Kinsella in the white. And there we see Carter Hills in the blue. He's still in front, but gee, there's some fast movers behind him. So uh, Carter Hills, or was it Mana Wainuhu? Have I got the right? It's in lane seven, isn't it? In, yeah. in front, yeah, yeah, in lane the blue, seven. absolutely. So Carter Hills holds it. Now the challenge has come. The white boat with the red nose, that's uh, Gus Kinsella. And down here in lane three, Jacob Robbers. He's really working overtime. Have we got a clear-cut winner here? I don't know. Carter Hills, is he going to be swallowed up on the line? Carter Hills, has he just hold it? I don't know if he did. It's 7, 5 and 3, but not necessarily in that order. Top Ooh. finish to the B final for the 14 and under K1500. Maybe, John. I think Gus might have just got up there. That was a strong finish yeah. down here on the inside. Jacob Robbers from Katapiro. Well, so we're just looking at the replay here. Oh, that's... <laughs> you can't tell, can I you? I couldn't tell. No, no, no. <laughs> yes, we'll leave that to the guys. A few pay scales above us. They can sort that <laughs> out. So I'm just going back to those uh, events that we were looking at previously, the 16 and under K1 500s. Um, the, the winning time, Jacqueline Kennedy, we talked about how impressive she, she was, a 2.06 for her. Gosh, and then Taylor so Newman, a 2.12, and Alexis Toy, um, 2.13. So yeah. that Kennedy, we thought she looked good, and she was. So the B final all done and dusted, but we'll let you know who won it because that was photo finished so I don't think the results will be up yet. Ooh, just getting a little bit twitchy here now for these, uh, this is the A final under 14 men's, that's our second false start for the day. Fifty, maybe that's why it was John, because it's just a little yeah. bit ahead of time. Yeah, it's two forty-nine. Yeah, yeah. Come on, guys, what can we do to bring us on? I oh, know what we'll have a false start. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you.
Just looking at these uh, boat washdown stations here, this horrible little, what is it, the golden clam that's spreading in our waterways. So please uh, disinfect your boats, folk. Don't want to take this stuff home, especially if you're right, on the mate. fresh water. Oh, yeah. That's such bad stuff. Mm. Anywho, we've got a good, clean start now. This is the A final for the under-14 men's. Just a little bit twitchy at the, at the start for the first start. We had a wee false start. So we're all out now. Well, Igor Semenov from Arawa in lane two has been a standout performer, and he looks to have had a really good start here. So look for him. That's two in from the uh, bank. Uh, out there at four from the outside, that's Dom Rowland out of Eastern Bay. He looks good as well. Still a bit to do. Yeah, so f absolutely flying out of the start. That was Igor uh, Semenov from Ottawa. But all's coming home now over here in the blue boat. Yeah. Maybe going to cut the 200 mark first. Yes, certainly. Yeah. Roland. Ro Dom Roland. Well, oh, he, he's got a boat length advantage now over yeah. Semenov and, and extending. And I think, John, maybe these middle lanes here, lanes four, they might swallow him up. Cole McBreetry. Braden Ferguson there in lane five as well. But certainly in six, it's Dom Roland with less than 100 to go now. Semenov holding on for... Second place, looks across to his right and really looks he, to be struggling. He is, he's spent. Yep. He had such a good start. So we'll, we'll look out for him for the 200s, but he's got swallowed up. Lane four, absolutely. Cole McBreetry coming through. Well, that's a fantastic performance here from Dom Rowland of Eastern Bay. He cruises through. Glances away to his left and now just sees the second place getter crossing. And that is McBreety and Semenov is in third place. Not far behind was Ferguson. And um, then we have uh, Mike Sun and Kirill Leoskovsky. And through on the inside now, Cooper Egan. Well, that was an excellent start by Egan. Just a uh, little piano fell out the sky, landed on his boat, I think, with about 200 to go. It'll come only for the under 14, his endurance. Watch out for him next year, particularly if he stays in the under 14s. He will be a force to reckon with. Might have to be jumping up to the under 16s. So, race 58. This is our semi-final of the under-14 women's K1-500. We still haven't, haven't been confirmed yet. The winner or well, the placings from that K1-500, 14 and under, which we couldn't pick ourselves. So I still haven't put up that final result. So this semi-final, as we see them all in, quickly through them. Closest to us in lane one, we got Iris Davis from North Shore. She's got her clubby with her. Mika Almiga from North Shore in lane two. Uh, Rita Ata from Poverty Bay in lane three. So they've had a great start. Lane four, Hawks Bay. That's Kaya Hohaya Hall. In lane four, Ruby Jones from Hawke's Bay in lane five. B.B. Kemp from Poverty Bay. There's that Kemp name again in lane six. India Vaughan, North Shore, lane seven. Tamara Mizove from Hawke's Bay in lane eight. And Paige Ainsworth from North Shore in lane nine. And this is a this is our semi. See who's going to go through to the final. You want to at least tell Nana and Pop that you made the final, yeah. don't you, John? Yeah, indeed. Yeah, so they will be racing through. You can phone them through with that good news. Looks like Ohio Hall in four and Jones in five, both from Hawke's Bay. Oh, lane two, just having... 
we just gone off track a bit, yes. eh? Yes. It's keeping those blades high, isn't it, too? It should just... But Kaya Ohio Hall in the green boat. Yeah. She's looking very good to make the final. As, as we've already seen, they, they can get swallowed up big time. Case in point, previous race. She's looking good. She's looking very good. Because she can just hold that. And it's a matter of two when, when you're this age, it's judgment comes into it, doesn't it? Yeah. How, f how hard have I gone? How hard can I go? What have I got left? Looks to be comfortable. Oh, it's still a big grudge match here for the young ladies either side of her in lanes three and five. I think second place just maybe we'll give it to lane three. That's Ruria Atta. Yep. And, and then Ruby Jones over there in lane five, John. And Atta looks better, yeah. doesn't she? Mm. Leaning forward a bit into it, really working, pulling through, displacing a lot of water and getting through to the line quite nicely. And then in lane five, we've got Ruby Jones of Hawke's Bay in third place. In lane six, uh, B.B. Kemp of Poverty Bay. So that's oh, here we go. This is a close finish. Oh, still heard the beep beep. So <laughs> somebody just coming home here now. Did she lose your number? Lane seven, I think. India Vaughan, is it? Yeah, I think so. Is that seven? Yeah, just oh. she's got a number on her boat. Hope that didn't drop in. So, back into some team boat racing here. We'll see some splashes now. So, uh, two heats of the under 18 men's K2 500. So, in lane two, closest to us, we've got North Shore. In lane three, Bay of Plenty. Lane four, Poverty Bay. Lane five, the Ottawa Canoe Club. And in lane six, North Shore Canoe Club. This is for the under 18 men's. Yes, so probably look out there to lane six, a very strong pairing of Swirl and Gilbertson. Look to be their number one combination there, ahead of uh, Quid and Emery. But then we see um, Chamberlain and Monk from Arawa in lane five. Still haven't got a result from event 56. That was a B final of the men's 14 and under K1 500. That was so close and so too was the final. So we'll let you know when those come through. So I think maybe the pairing, our North Shore pairing of Coyd and Emery uh, that were down there for lane two, John, may have scratched. Yep. But it looks like the red boat here of Ottawa, Chamberlain and Monk. Gosh, they've flown out of the start. Surprisingly. Yeah. <laughs> hey, they really start well. That combination looks as though it's been together for a lifetime. Not bad for under 16. And here we come. Look at this big kick from the North Shore. Yeah. I think they're just trying things up. They, they are a st very strong start pairing, the North Shore of Swirl and Gilbertson. Maybe they said, let's just, let's just try, let's just take it out a little bit slower and we'll finish strong. Well, if that was their plan, they're certainly achieving yeah. it. Yeah. 
Is it? They're coming back. <laughs> yeah, this is a heat. Yeah, yeah, we only need to finish in the first yeah, three, no uh, but we don't want to be finished second here. Yeah. So North Shore attacked. Arrow were responded. Yeah. Arrow were now have the lead. Thirty meters to go. Arrow were just and and psychologically they're saying you had a go at us and we held you off. We're happy with that. Good stuff. Nice racing like that. Neither crew looking at the other, eh? They're coming no, no. back saying, yeah, no we'll talk to you given. after the final. Yeah. <laughs> not a quarter given, not a quarter no, expected to no. be given. Yeah. Poverty Bay finishing next, and they have plenty in fourth place. So that was our first heat of... The under 18 men's K2. Second heat, now where there's a scratching in there, I'm pretty sure it was lane two. I think so. Yeah. So let's move on to the second heat. Uh, there's five boats in this. Uh, closest to us in lane two, White Trout, De Silva, and Andrews. Lane three from North Shore, Jarvis, and Story. And lane four, Poverty Bay, Hamblin, and Campbell. Lane five, Ottawa, Rogers and Monk. And lane six, North Shore, Dooney and Ormond. Yeah, but was that other North Shore crew that yeah. didn't start? So we've got prize giving again at the end of this session, which is due to finish just after half past four. And um, excitingly for the board in, of um, Canoe Racing New Zealand, there's the annual general meeting. For the board and, and all interested parties. Yes. So if you're at all interested, the AGM is being held in the... Uh, High Performance Centre. So a good start here. Five crews. For this is our second heat of the under 18 men's. So lane two, White Tra lane three, North Shore, lane four, Poverty Bay, lane five, Ottawa, and lane six, North Shore. So there's uh, two North Shore we had one scratching, didn't we? So there was a North Shore in the first heat and two in this. Very strong club. So Whites are just finding the pace a little bit tough at the moment, but certainly North Shore of Jarvis and Story in lane three. Going very, very well indeed. And then immediately on their right, the Poverty Bay pairing of Hamblin and Campbell, who are going well, and Ottawa. So I think these are our top three crews, North Shore, Poverty Bay and Ottawa. 
as we come to the 200. Yeah, well, I don't know who was first. <laughs> oh, I, th <laughs> first oh, I think yeah. <laughs> just Arrow, I think, yeah, eh? Yeah, yep. maybe, yep. maybe. Maybe. So in the black, that's Arawa. And the familiar red and white of Poverty Bay. And uh, then North Shore, closest to the bank. And now it's settling down to Poverty Bay and yes. Arawa. As we've seen, Arawa like a challenge. And, and these two here, Rogers and Monk. Oh, North That's Shore Lewis right Monk. Up. Yeah. Now Poverty Bay trying to stick it to them. Oh, trying to make this another photo finish. Oof. Gee. I think the line came just close enough. You only heard yeah. the one bleep. So Arawa and Poverty Bay look like Arawa from here, but... We'll get confirmation of that later. That's the second heat of the 18 and under men's K2 500. So lane six, it's North Shore, Dooney and Orman. Just, oh. Bit of timing issues there. I'm sure they'll have that sorted before too long. Well done, guys. So, semi-final. Event 61. Open and 23 and under women's K1 500. Now, these ladies will want to be making the final. That's for sure. So, we have Lucy Campbell from Ottawa in lane one. Brianna Trewern from Mana in lane two, Isla Joyce from Ottawa in lane three, Isla Westlake from North Shore in lane four, Jessica Clegghorn, Eastern Bay in lane five, Madison Garrett from Ottawa in lane six, Leah McCullum from Ottawa in lane seven, and Rebecca Scott from the Bay of Plenty in lane eight. All these ladies are ready to go. Only one semi-final. So we've already found some finalists through the heats. Girls are coming around now. Still no confirmation of that um, very tight finish in the 14 and under men's K1 B final. Or the A final, in fact, because um, that was really close. We're just standing by now for this race. Semi-final. We're up to event number 61. We're getting through it nice and quickly. Remember to take those numbers back. If you've got some lying around inside your tent area up there, and uh, just take a quick run down. No, don't run. Just take a quick walk down and uh, deposit those numbers. They'll be appreciated. Here we go. K1500 semi-final. Lucy Campbell. Ottawa, she's in lane one. She looks set to go. There's two Islas there, Isla Joyce from Ottawa and Isla Westlake of North Shore. So Joyce from Ottawa. Just waiting for Campbell to be held. She is. There they go. You see the splash from here, and it, all eight of them seem to have got away nice and smoothly. So just going through them again, that's Campbell here on lane one. A Truern alongside her from Mana. A good start, very good start from Isla Joyce of Ottawa. Westlake of North Shore is in lane four. She's handily placed. And then you go out again to those lanes six and um, or five and six in this instance, Cleghorn and Garrett. Garrett from Aroa out in lane six and Cleghorn of Eastern Bay. 
in the yellow boat. So now they're sorting themselves out. Lanes two and one and two, that's Campbell and Trewern, have dropped off the pace. Isla Joyce of Arawa is there, joined by Westlake of North Shore. And then Clegg, Horn and Garrett. Yeah, yeah. Jessica Cleghorn, gosh, she looks very, very strong in that yellow boat. Going well just and over on to her right. Close to us in that r the red and white boat Yeah, is uh, Isla Joyce. Going very well indeed. So they're f through the 200. She's, um, she's held the lead for yeah. much of this race, Isla Joyce, but now it's where it really counts. Can she continue to hold off. This is a semi-final. So Isla Joyce, but over there in the yellow boat, Clegg Horn of Eastern Bay may have moved up and taken over, but it won't be by much as we get a really good view of them in a moment. So yes, it is. It's Clegg Horn leading. Garrett is second. And Joyce maybe just out of third. We'll see mm. as they come to the line in about 10 metres to go. And it's really impressive from Jessica Cleghorn. And um, fighting back is Joyce over Garrett. Joyce or Garrett? And uh, oh, it's one of those ones, <laughs> but maybe it was Joyce thrusting at the line. She might have got there. Isla Joyce of Arawa over Madison Garrett, her teammate from Arawa as well. I think they might be safe because I think all those three have made it through. That was a tough race. Well done, ladies. Making it through to the final. It's a good effort. What have we got coming up now, John? Well, we're into the men's K1 500 semi final. Number 62, he says, looking this drastically for a piece. 16 men's. Jack Cooper, Whitra, uh, Sean Burgess, Hawks Bay, Oliver McDonald, Caden Thrupp, uh, Dane Wooster, AJ Kinsella, Martine Baker, Hunter Lee, and Luca Cartwright. So the two outside lanes, eight and nine, are from Carapiro. And then we've got uh, a couple of Hawks Bay in lane seven and lane two. So Burgess in lane two from Hawks Bay. Whitera have one, that's in lane one, Jack Cooper. Arawa in three, Bay of Plenty in five. Semi final, 16 and under, men's K1 500. So this is event number 62 which means we've only got um, a handful to go after this. 70 events today, ending the, with the junior mixed relays. So I hope you've got those combinations all sorted out. Oh, I don't want to go on the mixed relay, coach. <laughs> oh, they do. They, it's such a fun event. Is, yeah. this, the, is this the chocolate? The chocolate race. We win a bar of oh, the Adresio uh, boat up, or I don't know if we still do that. <laughs> hmm. oh, I see just eight starters there, do I? Let's have a look. Thank you. Yeah. Race 62. All right. So we've got a lane one, I think. Yeah, Jack Cooper yeah, not Jack there. Jack Cooper scratched from the white trap. Very early, but maybe lane two. Sean Burgess, good start, closest to us. So this is their uh, semi-final 
for the under set. They'll be racing. I want to make the final. I need to make the final. I want to make the final. Let's tick that box off to say we made the final. Some of the racing was very, very close, as we can see. They'll step up. They'll find another gear if they do make the final. Just maybe falling off lane two now. And here come the, the race horses coming through the middle of the course. That green boat. One of them surely it can't be the same green boat. Yeah, that's but that's uh, Caden Thrupp from Poverty Bay. Just a striking colour, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That candy, go candy green. And Wooster alongside him yeah. in the black and white. So those two look to have settled themselves out in front now as they've gone through the halfway mark. But there's um, quite a few still in this. Oliver McDonald of Arawa is uh, dangerous in lane three. And then it's Thrupp, and then Worcester has the lead, but on his, uh, his side is AJ Kinsella and then Martini Baker. Semi-final, as Max said, wanting to tick the box, get through to the final. That's where you want to be. Or a very strong finish out towards the end. That's uh, lane seven. Yeah, Martini Baker still... Just having the measure of the course, lane five, bringing it home. That's Dane Worcester. Excellent racing by him. But it's going to be very, very close coming home here. It's going to be another one of those, John. I can pick fourth. Yeah. That will be oh, close between four and seven. But So second and third. Don't know. Could Don't be know. Thrupp or Baker. Yeah. And, we'll uh, have to... Yeah, hold good, all bets. Good finish. A ni nice, uh, confident display from Dame Wooster in lane five from Bay of Plenty. You'll be happy with that. That was a good race all the way down the course. All the way. Seen some, even in these fine conditions, these calm conditions, just some hairy moments. Not only in the K1s, K2s and the K4s. So event 63, we're going to get these out of the way pretty quick because this is the Open Men K2 500. Next to the K4, of course, these would be the fastest craft on the lake. No athletes in lane one. Lane two, we've got North Shore. That's the pairing of Clifton and Oosterhausen. In lane three... Otago, they, these guys will fly out the start. That's uh, Munro and McGibbon. Lane four, Poverty Bay, Firkins and Firkins. Lane five, Wanganui, Brown and Lace. That's also going to be a fly out the start. And lane six, Bay of Plenty, Mason and Walker. That's the first heat of the Open Men's K2 500. Just waiting for the last crew to back in here. set in the starters hands first heat of this open men's K2 500 Sadly, a little false start there.
very hard to call who's a false start without putting the hex on them. It may be it was lane five. Brown and Lace, but anywho, we're all back in. We're you all just backed like in again. to blame lane five oh. every time, don't you? <laughs> every time there's been a false start, you I, said lane five. I was actually looking on oh, here okay. over towards lane six, which was Mason <laughs> and Walker, because uh, Mike being an old head at this, uh, but no, I will apologise to you, Mike, <laughs> here and now. wasn't you. There we go. That's a better start. Nice, clean start. So this is uh, heat one of two heats. Heat one, so lane two, North Shore, lane three, Otago, lane four, Poverty Bay, lane five, Wanganui, and lane six, Bay of Plenty. And I thought maybe this Otago pairing of uh, Munro and McGibbon from Otago, they picked their races. They have they've <laughs> flown out of the start. Just looking at the replay now, Gosh, they have launched out like a catapult. Just checking each yeah. uh, uh, the opposition too. We glance across from the man in the front, Munro. They're just settling into it now as we come into the 200. That little uh, lime green line, buoy line there, that's a 200 line. So, yeah, they've settled down now. They've got where they want to be. It's the heats. Flying home, though, no, just look at that. It's a little grudge match with Poverty Bay here. Firkins and Firkins trying to get up for second. No, but Brown and Lace, not on their shift in lane five. Yep, good. Three, five, and four. And they're such experienced competitors, aren't they? They just rock through, do their quick warm down at the end of this, just carry on through, wait for the rest to finish. The whole field is finished now. And then it'll just be, right, we've done that. Now let's think about the next one. So the Open Men K4, K2 500, first of the two heats. We're going to do our second heat just... Before we go through it, I'm just going to look at lane three here. North Shore, Nataki and, and uh, Riser. This is uh, an interesting pairing. Also, Imri, but he didn't race. Uh, he didn't race the uh, K1 500s. One, two, three. Oh, maybe they are they in there? Maybe they pulled out. Looks like there might be a boat down there for them. Anywho, so lane two, Karapiro, uh, Gray and Ferguson, North Shore, Ashton Riser and Nataki. Lane four, North Shore, Gilbertson and Clancy. Nothing's better than having two creeps from the same club side by side. <laughs> uh, so we've got a lane five, Mana, that's Imri and Elof. Can't actually see them, so they may be scratched. Lane six, White Trail, McCullum and Barnes, and lane seven, North Shore, Prato and Lees. John, they've kindly given us a pair of binoculars here. Why don't we use them? Yeah, good idea, because your eyesight's not great. No. Yes, lane five is empty, so that's uh, Imri and Elof must have scratched out. And after this we get into the semis of the 16 and under women's K1 500. And then two finals, the 14 and under mixed K4 and the 18 and under men's K2.
Isn't it ironic? We had no held starts for the first <laughs> morning session and we had uh, not a false start. So we heard lane three and lane four, though, two North Shore. Mm. Please. <laughs> the two North Shore crews here. That's a better start. We're out of the blocks now. Oh, and flying out of that start is the North Shore pairing of Risey and Nataki. They look good. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, they look good. They've really just said to the others, catch us if you can from this position. And they will too because Gilbertson and Clancy are right there alongside them. So it's the two North Shore Club's having a go at it. They're going hell for leather there. Far side is looking good too. That's Waitra and North Shore, the third of the North Shore combos. I think uh, the, it is the North Shore pairing maybe just coming back now in the darker boat. So it was definitely the, the pairing of Riser and Nataki that got the better of the start. But uh, coming back at them now as we come into the 200, and over the far side, we've got Whitetra, McCullum and Barnes. They're not letting it go either. And sneaking up on the inside here is, is if to say, don't forget us, guys, as the, as the uh, Katapiro team. But it's a very close race. Over the far side, perhaps, John. I don't oh, know about you, so. but it might yeah. be Whitra, oh, McCullum so. and Barnes. They're going for it. Just a wee glance to the left for McCullum and Barnes. And they'll know that this attack is coming at them. They do hold a slight advantage, but not by much. I think they've been overtaken. This is line call here. Black boat, I think, maybe. Maybe four, three and seven eventually. No, it might have gone to um, Gilbertson and Clancy of North Shore yeah. from Riser and Nataki and, uh, and not North Shore, but McCallum and Barnes of Waitara. Gee, Could it be 346? Maybe it was 436. Might have been 634. <laughs> might have been 23467. Uh, oh, we, that was close. That, that was might a, be the closest of yeah. the finishes. We've seen close between one and two quite yes. often, but that was one, two, and three. All c coasting. <laughs> hitting the line together very good well I think if that was the uh, heats for two heats I think they'll all be safely through those three yep. crews but <laughs> nobody got bragging rights we've got a bit of a hiccup with our live results system at the moment because we still haven't got through the those uh, 14 and under uh, finals events 56 and 57 um, but uh, they're out there somewhere, they're just not appearing, so you'll know whether you've won it or not, but you, I'm just taking you back, they were two really close finishes. Um, I think maybe Carter Hills got up for the B final from North Shore, but anyway, we can, you can confirm those yourselves later. So the results have sort of stopped on uh, live results, but I'm sure they'll pick up. Or maybe it's just my phone. Uh, I think I can't get the app going either, John. Oh, so okay. I'm just having to go to uh, our website, NZTC New Zealand Canoe Sprint Champs. And down there, if you scroll down there, it's got... Um, Day one, day two, and day three. All these three days are being live streamed. So if you click through YouTube, 
So we uh, click on those, you can see it coming live. Semi-finals now of the 16 and under women, K1500, Rosara Davis, North Shore, Emma Dixon, Ottawa, Peyton Quartel, Hawke's Bay, Holly Rowland, Eastern Bay, Layla Stubble, Hawke's Bay, Emma Turton, Bay of Plenty, Arabelle Harrison, Hawke's Bay, and Michaela Bates, Hawke's Bay. So four from Hawke's Bay in this race, one from North Shore, one from Ottawa, one from Bay of Plenty, one from Eastern Bay. Well, it looks like those closest lanes to us, John, lanes uh, two, three, four, and five. Yeah. Those three young ladies have just bolted out. So Holly Rowland certainly out in lane five. She looks to be prominent at the moment. Inside is uh, Peyton Quartel. But those positions might just change as this race goes on. But watch out for Holly Rowland, Eastern Bay. I think Holly Rowland, she's going very, just uh, lane two there. Rosada Davies just had a little whoopsie moment. This is that first of the semi-finals, 16 and under women. Now that Holly Rowland will just be aware that there's a white bow coming up alongside her, and that's from Peyton Quartel of Hawke's Bay. Just emerging now as they've gone through the 200 mark. So those two have settled down. It's Holly Rowland in the black and Peyton Quartel in the white, and it's the white boat that's finishing stronger. I totally agree. She hasn't let up since she's hit that 200 mark. She's oh, just oh. walked up and rolled past her lane five. So lane four coming through. Peyton, excellent race. And she's going to take it by a oh, boat length. Yeah. I think. Or more. Yeah. I mean, yes, she's, she was rocketing home, but. I think lane five, maybe, but so that was old Holly. She went, oh, I've got this. But excellent racing, lane four. That'll keep your smile on your Wouldn't coach's it? face. Emma Dixon well done, third and Rosara Davis fourth. I, just watching uh, Peyton Quartel, she gave it a big sigh at the end, big yeah. exhale, exhalation. Yeah. But she gave it everything there. I think that was uh, pretty much a good workout for her. Semi-final, first one goes to Peyton Quartel of Hawke's Bay from Holly Rowland of Eastern Bay. Well, just should remember that because when it comes to the final, will those two be in similar positions or will it be a big change around as we go into the next of those semis? And that's got uh, Katia Cameron Bennett of Mana, Zoe Anderson, Wanganui, Hayley Stewart, Wanganui, Stella Cross in Arawa and Hannah Gard, Arawa, Victoria Havaneth of Mana in seven, Helena Panea of Arawa in eight, and Leandra Owens of North Shore in nine. So already we've seen a very good dominant performance from Quartel in this first of the semi-finals, and we see a, a now a boat in a similar lane to what she was in, looking quite prominent there. We've got um, Mana, Wanganui, and then Hayley Stewart from Wanganui, and the next one is Stella Crossan. I think that is her in lane five from Arawa, and a couple out from her is uh, looking impressive too. That'll be Helena Panea of Arawa. So Arawa one and two at the moment. Here's the red boat jumped out there. I think that might be Zoe Anderson. She had a terrific uh, coming up now just Lane four, is it lane four? I think it's no, Stella it's Crossan. Lane five, yeah. Stella, yes. So Stella Crossan in the all black, as you can see. She's mm. certainly got a probably a boat advantage over Zoe Anderson from Whanganui. And over in lane eight, it's Helena Panea, also of Arawa in the blue. Blue boat, that is. 
So five leads, maybe eight from three or the other way around. That is, it's three from eight. So definitely lane five. Yep. She's making no fist of it. That's Stella from Ottawa Club. Oh, she just eased up now. That's okay. We'll give her that. And lane three. Had a great start, Zoe. Had it. We'll watch her in the 200s. Gosh, she had a great start out of the blocks. Helena Panier gets uh, third and Hayley Stewart in fourth. So this is a fi final that's going to be worth watching. Without doubt, the 16 and under women's K1 500. That and the under 14s. <laughs> the numbers are certainly there. Right, look, let's see the K4s coming around. This is a K4 mixed. So still you've got your clubs, but it's the uh, ladies... And the men, all mixed up. Well, North Shore in lanes one, and one, two, and four, and nine. So one, two, four, and nine are North Shore. And then we have Poverty Bay in three and five. And uh, then we have Hawke's Bay in six, East Side in seven, and Ottawa in eight. It's our next race. It's uh, 14 and under mixed K4 500. Full of interest, this. You know, big team racing and particularly mixed team racing. Just the big boats have all backed in now. So nine, oh, is it, this is our first K4, all nine lanes taken up for the day. It's great to see, considering we kicked off the day with K4s. Up, just looking at the starters, which is a great view. Some of them we got legit K4s, and looks like we got like a TK4 or so. The backs, the bells, uh, some boats are longer than others. Starter's hand as he's just juggling them. So we've got a couple of the boats here I'm just seeing here because they're shorter than their traditional K4s. They actually hold, the starters have has released them so they can come up. And they've come up, they're a good metre short. So it's uh, honestly a gentleman rules here. So we've got one, two, three four K4s that are a little bit shorter than the rest. And so they've been released from the pontoon, so their bows all start the same, which is only fair. And we all got a good fair start. So it looks like lanes one, three, uh, seven, and nine, not a traditionally full-length K4 boat, now this is an interesting <laughs> race for this under 14 mixed. When you saw the numbers of the under 14 girls and the under 14 uh, men, you could almost do this, double this again. Yes. 
So lane four, the white yeah. boat looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. This um, North Shore, one of the North Shore clubs. And then uh, Poverty Bay uh, in lane five. Lane six also, that's Hawke's Bay. I wonder how often they've trained together. Or is it... Um, well, you know what? They, they're looking... The, oh, the f lanes one and lane three. Looking a little bit like a caterpillar coming down their course. <laughs> but um, certainly these well-drilled boats... Lane five, I was going to say, Poverty Bay, the red of Poverty Bay. You know, you might not be first out of the blocks, but if you can hold your timing and that discipline together, that's going to come through. And look at that. If we just froze it there, a snapshot in time, all those blades would be... Looks like we've got, is it... Oh, it's hard to say who's where... Looks like the girls in the front two seat for Poverty Bay and the two boys in the back. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Coming yeah, okay, home you in lane this. two. Who's going to get second, third and fourth? Oh, I'll give it to lane six for second, yeah. but oh, lane two. You, you had a good kick. Maybe just a little kick earlier. Lane, I think lane three, we've got one young lad in the front and then three ladies in the boot. Good racing. Yep, Excellent good racing. racing for the North under Shore 14s. North Shore on the mix. far side now, yeah. just coming through. That completes that nine contestants in the final of the 14 and under mix K4. So I guess the under 14, you guys probably want to get out of your boats really quick because we need you for the event 69, which is the junior mix, which is the 16 and under. So I guess for the relays... Many of you athletes are going to be in for that. So here we go. An, a, a final to finish the day on. This is uh, the under 18 men's K2 500, John. So some of these have come through the hard way, through the heats, uh, through the semis. I was just flicking through the names of those that competed in that most recent event, the 14 and under mixed, and uh, I just got stopped counting those that are going to be competing in the <laughs> junior mixed relay. So yeah. it is a quick turnaround. Yeah. And uh, look, they're just coming straight from the finish line to um, the pontoon. Uh, no warm down for these young fellas. Young girls, young guys. So we've got this final now coming up of the uh, under-18 men. So we've got uh, Bay of Plenty, lane one, North Shore, lane two, North Shore, lane three, Ottawa in lane four. We've got uh, Ottawa again in lane five, Poverty Bay in lane six. So we've got, we're doubling up on a few of the uh, yeah, clubs. Yeah. Poverty Bay got two, Ottawa got two, North Shore have three, uh, Waitara has one. Uh, so we've got Poverty Bay in seven, Waitra in the eight, and again a North Shore in nine. So North Shore lanes two, three, and nine. We've got Poverty Bay lanes six and seven, and we've got Ottawa lanes four and five. And this is a final, so we've loaded our bases. Those Arawa combinations look really hot they, with the Monk daunting, brothers. Aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> Dylan and Lewis yeah. Monk, and then Chamberlain and, and Rogers. Yeah. But um, North Shore always strong, and Poverty Bay, Hamlin and Campbell too. Yeah. So, well, we'll see what happens in this. This is a 500 K2 final for the men's 18 and under. 
So they look to be ready. The lane three, Gilbertson and yeah. Swirl, went in their heat. They or they just kind of like played around a little bit. We had a slower start, but stormed home. But the Poverty Bay pairing pit them. So I don't think they're going to do that anymore. We're just looking. Oops. There's a couple of K2s swapping lanes. Something happening here. Oh, so right. no numbers for lanes two and six. So lanes two, we've just heard that they don't have a number. So please bring those numbers back, folks. We've got a boat out there that are in lane two and they don't have a number because they probably couldn't get one. So please make sure at the wrap-up of today, all the numbers, I'm just looking at all the boats up there. I can't see any numbers on any of the boats left on the boats. But if you just should have forgotten walking back to your tent smuggled in a towel somewhere could be a number so we just had a wee swap around they're all back in now into the starters hands as they're backing in So the hold-up is lanes two and six uh, have no, didn't have numbers and they're now getting into the correct lane. I can't see any numbers being rushed down. Oh yes I can see some being collected up the top. So a good clean start for this final, the under 18 men's. And I think as expected of that North Shore pairing in lane three of Swirl and Gilbertson, they, uh, they're not playing around anymore. They had a flyer out of the blocks. It's going to be interesting. And two over from them, yes, Ottawa, Chamberlain and Monk. So the grudge match as to be expected in the uh, heats. And here they kick. North Shore are kicking. Good strong kick, less than oh, 300 out. They they look like they had a burner put on them. Oh, I do like that red boat though. Yes, Chamberlain and Monk in lane five. Can they hold on? Can they hold on? They were the first to cross through the 200. Can they hold on? North Shore, as to be expected, they're not going to let them go. But gosh, yeah, I agree with you, John. They, they do look good in that red boat. So that's Chamberlain and Monk. The challenges are Sewell and Gilbertson from North Shore in lane three. But gosh, that's a, two and a, that's a boat length and a half and extending. Yeah. This is a magnificent way to finish uh, this um, K2. Oh, heads down and just powering for it. Will they cruise at the line or they go right through it? They go right through it and they win it easily. That's a three boat length win over lane three, which is Sewell and Gilbertson and lane seven, Egan and Kennedy from Poverty Bay. They get up for the bronze. Um, Rogers and Monk of Arawa in for fourth place. And gosh, that was, well, wow. we saw the start. We could see a replay of the start here on the live streaming and certainly... Rogers and Monk were away quickly, but also Sewell and Gilbertson. Um, but then it just was Chamberlain and Monk from lane five from Arrowa taking control and asserting a real dominance to take the final, the 18 and under men's K2 500. So are we the last event of the day? Yep, 68 were just done, so... 69 and... It's 70, a relay. And that's yeah. the junior mixed. The junior mixed relay. Yep. So, come on, guys. This is due to go. Are we having a wee break? I think we might have a wee break here. Oh, we do. 3.45 yeah. tall. Yeah. So we've got maybe a 25-minute break between the race we just had, 68 and 69. So, and there's... Look, there's no wonder there's two heats of these. The junior mixed relay. <laughs> there's so many, which is to be expected. That's pretty loaded with these uh, under 6, 16 and under. This will be fun.
there, there's likely to be a fair bit to get you excited. So the final event of day one, Junior Mixed Relay. So two heats for this. North Shore have two teams in this first heat. Arawa, Poverty Bay, Hawks Bay and Mana. And in the next heat, uh, Poverty Bay have two teams. Bay of Plenty, North Shore, Arawa, Waitara, Eastern Bay Canoe Club. Well, here we go in the closest lane, it's North Shore, then Aroa, Poverty Bay, North Shore again, Hawke's Bay and Mana in lane seven. Very good start from Aroa. And over on the far side, that's Hawke's Bay. So this is the first heat of two. So we've got uh, obviously mixed here, John. So they've played your card. They've got three guys going off first to get a bit, little bit of a lead. They tagged. So we can see some, all of a sudden, a lead can be chopped into in this mixed relay. Gosh, lane three. Who is that? That's our... Um, That's Arawa. Arawa. Gosh, strong paddler. Do we see who that is? Well, I think that the two paneers have yeah. gone off the front. That's... Um, gosh, that very good. Well, that's a good fair start. Yeah. Way back from the... I think Daniel went off first and then uh, Nicole, Nicole was second for them. But who's that? Uh, that's uh, lane six out there, is it? Hawke's Bay? Well, I can't see any disqualifications happening here because they are well off the start when their, their club mate comes in to cross the line. A few seconds, in fact. So who we got for the last tag coming up? Lane six, that's uh, Hawke's Bay doing it well with... It's, uh, I think it's Nuka time maybe coming off the back for them. Well, it's closed up between second and third. Looks like Mana over the far side in lane seven down here on the inside. 
So, yep, lean seven. On the far side getting yep. up for third in this. So it's been... Ooh, look at this fourth and fifth. Yeah. Hawks Bay winning the first. Uh, Arawa second. And that is Mana uh, followed closely by Poverty Bay and North Shore. And here's the second of the North Shore teams coming through now. So that's the first of our heats, two heats of the Junior Mixed Relay. Very smoothly done. Well started, Matt, and the team. That's good. You'd expect that from a starter of his calibre if he's got to start the Olympic Games. Yeah. And that's not bad for someone who just rocked up and said, oh, can I help do something? <laughs> <laughs> and eventually yeah, he's off. Yeah. With hey, Karen to the Olympics yeah. and things, yeah, really good. A lot of work involved, a lot of time. Yeah. It's great to see all the officials filling in these spots. So if you've got any stories to tell or messages you want to put across, um, you see... Myself or John McDonald wandering around, just let us stop us and let us know and we'll give you the opportunity to talk in some of the gaps. We'll take the microphone down below and um, just have a quick chat to you in some of the breaks or even during some of the races. Because all clubs have got really good stories to tell. How did these youngsters want to get involved? What attracted them? Who does all the work in your club? Is it left to just three or four of you or even one? How many parents are out there who started when their youngsters were under 14s and have given up the sport a long time ago, but you're still involved yourself? So canoeing is one of those sports, like so many, in which people get involved and just stay with it for a lifetime. So the second of our heats will uh, leave the airways free so that the starters can sing out the instructions to the competitors.
Here in lane two, we've got Bay of Plenty, but scorching away and ooh, I'm not sure about the takeover, but it might be a little question mark there. However, uh, in front on the water anyway is, uh, I just can't even see them through my binoculars. So that's lane five. So that is the Arawa Canoe Club. Poverty Bay alongside of them in lane six. Yeah, I'm just going to look at that change over here from Ottawa. Oh, we just can't quite get the, the camera angle on that. Yeah. Anyway, we'll leave that up to the judges. Yep. But They'd the leaders changed to Ottawa and Poverty Bay. So Ottawa leading, Poverty Bay second. The next to change over is in lane two. That's Bay of Plenty. The Worcesters in this boat. With Fraser and Turton, that's Bay of Plenty. Sharp turn over there. So again, Ottawa. Poverty Bay on the hunt. So Ottawa have uh, Helena Panea, Crossan, um, Monk, that's uh, Lewis Monk, and McDonald. That's a powerful combination, and it proves to be so on the water. So five and six, Ottawa and Poverty Bay, and retaining third place throughout has been the Bay of Plenty team. Oh, just some wee corrections. They might get up lane four, just a few here, but they might get up over lane three. That's North Shore. Just coming home over Poverty Bay. Oh, another correction. But no harm done. So Poverty Bay get up for fourth. Uh, North Shore Surrey for fourth and Poverty Bay in for fifth. I'll get it right yet. At Whitera and Eastern Bay. Yep. So that's been a really enjoyable first day. John, it has. And, yep, we've got uh, another big program, of course, for tomorrow. But it's so fantastic to see the colourful uh, site here with, uh, as you mentioned, such a great green grass with the rain that they've had over uh, the recent period. Uh, everyone doing their job well. It's been organised superbly. Very few hiccups, only half a dozen false starts. And that was only after you said we haven't <laughs> had any yet. Uh, but most of all, we've been treated to some wonderful canoeing today and we look forward to more of that tomorrow first race start at 8 30 so enjoy your night uh, rest up well think about the strategy for tomorrow and enjoy that yeah just make a quick mention for the agm so uh, get along to that to the high performance center and numbers please bring back your numbers ready for a good start thank you tony ready for a good start tomorrow morning well done thank you night night